Heck yeah. Woo! Hello. Hey. Hello, everybody. How are we doing today? Uh, I'm doing great. Yeah. 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 All right. Doing pretty, That's pretty good. Well. It's a Saturday. I like it's a Saturday. I'm always a fan of the weekend. I should Lately, actually open up my chat. It. I like always forget to open up my chat. I'm like, all right, cool. Like I'm ready to go. Oh, wait, I'm not ready. <laughs> I think it's also this thing where I'm like, okay, we're on Twitch. Like it has to be going on Twitch before I can open the chat. That's not true. It's just a false belief that I have. Hello, Panda 94. Welcome. Good. Uh, good morning. Uh, it's evening for us, but good morning. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. Happy to have you. Is this your first time? Because if it is, I might have to do a 20 minute recap. Of the <laughs> you entire... might have to do a 20 minute recap. <laughs> uh... oh. oh, okay. All right. Sick. Well, uh, Panner, have you have you been watching for a while? Uh, are you up to speed on where we're at? Or would you like a brief uh, recap <laughs> of what has gone on in the campaign so far? Brief. <laughs> Oh, yeah. If Dave was I'm, here, I'm he could you recite can't. your whole recap mm-hmm. because. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away, dude. Please do the rest. Please do the rest. <laughs> okay. Panner's been here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think you do it better than me. Keep going. <laughs> oh. Oh, we'll see. All right, cool. All right, uh, cool. You know, I learn. I, 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 I'm better every day because you're in my life, Nolan. Um, all right, well, Panda, thank you, and Wait. thanks to everybody else uh, who's here. We are going to jump in. Um, uh, yes, we are in our, our Voluthel, and we have. Uh, so, what happened last session? Um, like, what are we? What's going on here in uh, the Block and Wood? Uh, we we went to. Hold up, I have it written down. We went to the Wood Elf capital, uh, which is known as something. Uh, hold on, I have it. Okay, know, it's called it's called our Beth Newell. It's the Block and Wood Forest capital, and uh, we're here. Uh, good lord, uh, we came here <clears throat> to drop off uh, Grint's body as well mm-hmm. as Astral to Grint's family. Um, but we got, we, we got roped into potentially stopping a genocide situation. So that's why we're fighting right now. <laughs> um, genocide's kind of a strong word. It is. He's not going to kill everybody. Just everybody who doesn't agree with him or choose to agree with him. You know, yeah. like he's going to give him a choice. Yeah. Um, he's not, he's not just going after them. He is. I mean, he, 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 doesn't like the high elves but he does think they've strayed but he doesn't think like he's not just killing them because they're high elves yeah essentially (laughs) what shape is the earth it's round (laughs) that's what it'll be doing so (laughs) exactly the world is easy without disagreeable people panner Masamune, yeah. welcome. Welcome. The choice of converted eye isn't a choice. Ain't that the truth yeah. for all rational thinking people? Yeah. So um, there was other stuff that happened. And I think somebody, I think it should popcorn to somebody else because I already got our Beth Newell and I feel like that's a good piece of information. <laughs> that, is, that is a good piece of information. In- oh, we got a seer back. Point, yeah, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. We didn't know if we were going to bring him back. We didn't know. Okay. We didn't know. We didn't you got know. Your I mean, little clover back. <laughs> yep. That was one of those things. Like, I tried, I was like, gave him a way back. to come back. And then he was like, nope. And I was like, okay, I guess the seer's going to stay dead. So, even though, like, I've used him as an NPC, I, w- I want the audience to know, like, there wasn't really like a hard and fast plan. Like, this is not one of those, like, ha ha, like, this has been in the, in the, the, like in the work since the beginning, like this is just kind of where the story went. Um, so it, I'm very happy to have Nasir back because I'm I'm interested in his story as well as Azaziel's and everybody's really. Um, but yeah, just so you know, this is not like this is not some long con. I do have long cons, but this was not one of them. 
I did also write down the name of the Arch Druid Wood Elf High Council members. Oh. Wrote down their uh, names. Okay, well, you get the inspiration point for the Arbeth Noel and for popcorning to somebody else. So who oh. wants to take the next one? Cool. It should be Nasir because he led that conversation. It's now parked to box. I like it though. I thought it was really good. It's good RP. child welcome back If I can elaborate on that just a little bit more, um, since we're in the moment, right? Right, like Arbatha, and you would, and you would know this being an Oak Strider. Now, uh, you, your memories are like each time you're reincarnated, right? You're like you have to kind of earn your memories back, like as you grow in power and and in spirit, right? And as you level up and you kind of get more connected to yourself and your environment, some of your past memories and things will come back. So you do learn things kind of as you go. Um, but, uh, you know, that the, um, Arbathod is a neutral God, right? Like, so he, uh, he, I say he, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a, they, it has multi, uh, it's all genders and no gender at the same time. Um, but the, so they, uh, Arbathod is, is a neutral God and they don't, uh, as long as like life their job, their profile is to make sure that life continues and that life, and, that, and it communicated to you that one of the highest tenets uh, of the kind of of the universe um, is that free will uh, is free will. And he, they created you guys, the um, you guys to be autonomous. And so even though, so you're allowed to disagree, you're allowed to come up with your own kind of what you like your own solutions to problems and test those out and try those out. Um, and as long as what you're doing is allowing life to continue and allowing life to flourish in the, in the realm, then it's blessed by, by them. Uh, so yes, uh, Dane, uh, who is a fellow Oak Strider has a very different opinion from you on kind of what his solution to this problem is right now. Um, and and yes and so he uh and like you're not stuck kind of in that profile of mercy that's just one that like you have gravitated to throughout your lifetimes as an oak strider um and so the um but yes and so that uh to kind of elaborate there a little bit more yes right now uh dane is kind of serving as the avatar of wrath or justice um and you are serving as mercy so what did you do uh, anyway in that in that kind of conflict, which I thought was really good. You guys handled that like debate really well. And it's still not over. You guys are still kind of in the council uh, with the the Ard Kinnair, who are the three high arch druids of of the of the Wood Elf Society, right? The the Sylvan um, there in our Beth Newell. Um, and and then you you challenged uh, Dane, correct? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a really good way. Because this, right. this fight isn't a fight to like kill one side or the other. It's it's a fight to like just win so that we can just buy ourselves more time because we're dealing with other other important stuff right now. We're dealing with like five world affecting important things and we don't need a six. Like, can you just pause? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Blixa, we're going to popcorn to you real quick. What do you, what's something, yeah. anything important, something you want to remember add to from last session or just thoughts on your character or whatever, and then we'll jump in. Yes. Um, we left off. Um, Nasir had downed Dane. Mm-hmm. Um, and Dane let us know that his people would not back down. Um, so we're still in combat. Um, and we are... Um, I believe against three others. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's, we left off, I believe, uh, Greg at the top of the order. Yep. So yeah, we're starting, we're starting the, we're uh, starting at the beginning of the next round. I think this is round three. Um, and that's where we're going to jump in. Thank you. Everybody grab an inspiration point um, for uh, the recap and everything. Uh, we will be, uh, we, we do miss Dave today. Um, he had to go out of town, so we will, uh, uh, Nolan's going to be kind of running Dave's character and, and the combat and Larissa will be playing Reggie, um, and Masamune, I see you. Uh, yes, respect the day. Absolutely. Um, I know I make that mistake a lot, uh, and the, and I accidentally missioned her is totally unintentional. Um, it's just, I have a post in it right behind my habit. camera that says Blixa is a they. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I always remember because it's right there. Yes. Um, okay, with that, we're jumping in. It is, uh, are we, can we jump over to the. No, they 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 heard they heard us on the re- recap, man. But when we switched to roll twenty, man, it it went back to Dave's audio, man. <laughs> all Speaking right. of, yeah, they should all hear us now. Sorry. Okay. Speaking of, I have I have circled here because I absolutely would have forgotten that I received a pep talk from chat. So I have a one d four bardic inspiration. Okay, so you got thing. the yeah the one d four bardic inspiration. Mm-hmm. Uh. Awesome. So everybody, everybody's starting with inspira- uh, with regular inspiration, and Larissa also has the pep talk. Cho- pep talk. Yes. And uh, chat for real, you get inspiration. So uh, we're gonna give it to Gabriel uh, since. Uh, well, I'm gonna give one to Masamune and to Gabriel. So uh, Masamune, uh, uh, whenever you want, uh, and and Gabriel, whenever you want, just uh, you can give chat or you can give an inspiration point to anybody in uh, the combat. You can give it to me if you'd like, um, if you'd like me to succeed, uh, or one of my uh, 
Um, so you don't you don't so, really have to, but but you can. You have that option. You, you can, just, you know. And then all right, uh, to fit, yeah, so you, <laughs> yeah. let me make this wisdom saving throws. <laughs> uh, slow guy fails. The one in the middle next to Dane also fails. What's your spell save DC again? Uh, 17, man. 17, huh? Wow, that's a pretty good spell save. Uh, this one is also, or Sarah is also going to fail. So you see them mid attack as they've got their hunter's marks uh, on you guys, drawing their bows back, uh, ready to unloose more arrows. Uh, lock in place, paralyzed uh, suddenly as the spell uh, hits them. <laughs> Sweet, man. Uh, and then I'm going to raise up my Vernon Vanquisher and go, Shillelagh! <laughs> and that's my turn, man. <laughs> well done. Well done. Oh, my gosh. D- D- <laughs> Dave, Dave gets an inspiration point when he gets back. Just for, <laughs> just for how well is uh, how Oh, well my God. Re- recreating this. Great. This. Loving every Dave. second of this. Oh, this is so great. All cool. right, uh, Blitza, so, you're next. Oh, sorry. So just to explain what I did, um, with hold person, they're now paralyzed. So if any attacks are done within five feet of them, that's an automatic critical hit. Okay. Thank you for uh, <laughs> thank you for the reminder because oh. those conditions are hard to remember. Uh, with that, it is Blix's turn, and then uh, Sarah will be on deck. Cool. Blixa is going to shoot at Slow Boy. Okay. And um, I am going to do Lightning Arrow. Ooh, that's fun. Um, which is I make just a regular attack roll as normal, and then uh, Slow Boy has to make a save and throw. Okay. So let's roll that. And I'm what save is he making? Uh, fourteen. Okay. On a, oh, what, what a stat? And that's a twenty to hit. Okay. Yeah, that hits. Slow Boy's got a lot of little symbols on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slow boy be. Got a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. Does paralyzed make them fail dex saves? Yeah, it does. Let's look that up. I'm pretty yeah. sure. It fail. You <laughs> automatically fail strength and dex. Paralyzed. Oh, cool. I'm paralyzed. I'm struck by you. All right. So that's uh, ten damage from the arrow itself. Okay. And then twenty-one lightning damage. Okay, which one's? Oh my gosh. All right. 21 lightning damage. Mm-hmm. That's that hurts a lot. Uh so he's already uh paralyzed and now he's electrocuted. Uh so <laughs> that happened. And yeah, all right. Uh a lot of damage. And then so yeah, he automatically fails his deck saving throw. Is there anything else? Is that what the lightning damage was, or is there an additional effect? No, that's the um hold on, let me just read really quick. Um there's nobody within 10 feet of him. If there was somebody within 10 feet, they would also have to make a deck save. Okay. Um and but it would be two D eight lightning damage. Okay. So instead of four. Okay. All right, good okay. turn. All right. I guess is that is that your turn? Or do you have more? No, I have one more. And I can shoot over Zilla, yeah? Oh, yeah, she's short. All right, I'm shooting the one next to Dane. He's still just shy of three feet tall. <laughs> All right. I just screamed duck. And then that Where? is a 24 <laughs> to hit. 24 hits. <laughs> and that is 12 damage. 12 damage. 12 right. duck damage. <laughs> duck damage. Woohoo! <laughs> 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 and then I'm going to move up a little bit. 
my and then coach. Lily is going to follow me and Lily is going to take the dodge action and that's my turn. All right. Amazing. I want Lily's dodging and uh oh okay, Sarah, it's Sarah's turn, so she gets to make her wisdom saving throw again. Nope, still fails. Um okie dokie. So now she, her turn is basically over. And Dane is still down. Uh, he's making death saving throws. Okay. Uh, you see he uh, he's doesn't cough up blood. Like he does seem to recover a little bit. Um, at least not die. Uh, and then that one's going to make their wisdom saving throw. Oh, uh, the one next to Dane is no longer paralyzed. Um, I do believe that happens at the end of their yep, turn, correct? At the end. So yeah, his turn is over. And then now Nasir, you're up, followed by Zilla, and then Reggie. Cool. Um, Zilla, I'm gonna let you have the the limelight, and you can do your sneak attack against uh, Thera. <laughs> okay. That, that'd be fun to see a, a crit sneak attack. Um, so I'm gonna attack uh, the other elf uh, beside Dane. Okay. <laughs> did you crit I didn't even Dis- lie like, I, I, <laughs> I just I don't even question it anymore <laughs> yes it just I, I sent you the picture on Facebook to confirm it with you but <laughs> like, like I said I, I don't just, even like I've always trusted you I've I just, always, like I've, just, I've been playing games with Nolan especially this like Dungeons and Dragons I've been playing this game with uh, Nolan for years and seriously nobody crits more than he does it's nobody it's uh, it's <laughs> astounding it really I, really truly is it's, like it's, there's just you know some people that you know on that bell curve of people that crit a lot and people yeah. that don't you're the- i'm never gonna win the lottery <laughs> you never know them you odds. never know um okay cool so that is i'm gonna put a divine uh um and it, what's it called into it um smite one of div- the yeah, divine smite Smitties. into it that is gonna be That's- 20 yeah 26 uh slat magical slashing and then it's gonna be uh, i'm only gonna do a second level spell slot so you dealt 26 magical slashing damage before your smite? Yeah. The, the 2d10 plus the 21. I rolled kind of low. Okay. <laughs> All um, right. And that's another 26 radiant damage. Okay. So, that, hold on. What was the, the math on the first? It was 26 and 26 again. So, that's yeah. 62. Uh, 52. 52? Okay. Da, 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 da. This, this is all fun. right all right yeah uh he surprisingly does not die um that is surprising but is looking very worse for wear cool. uh, yeah. what, what is that like what does your smite look like when you hit him it's that green flame yes yeah it's uh the green light travels up um the like the markings of uh Arbathod from when i died um goes into the blade and then just the blade ignites and a green flame. Um oh. and I'm gonna do extra attack. Okay. Oh yeah you can do that. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like I was like oh the pain is over now. Nope. Not at all. Uh that's a Get 17 to hit. <gasps> oh okay yeah it's on the money. Yep yeah. you got him. Okay. Uh that this is, is 17. That's 24 uh magical slashing 24 magical slashing and boom uh yeah 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 you murk him he, cool. he did uh, uh are you are you trying to kill him no or is this non-lethal damage um i was gonna heal them so okay i, I have ways to heal uh okay so all right so they're yeah. gonna i guess do you want to leave him stable or do you want him to make death saving throws um I want them to make death saving throws. Like uh, Dane looks like he's doing fine. Like he's probably going to okay. s- stabilize and then he's going to go unconscious, right? I mean, we'll see. He, I, I'm literally going by the dice on this. Yeah, so it's true. Let's pass his first one. Yeah, I'll, I'll, 
Because if I heal them... Th if you heal them right now, combat will continue. I would wait until yeah. after. Yeah. Because, I mean, he did say, keep going. Like, they yeah. they are trying yeah. to beat you. Cool. That... Uh, um. Let me put a token on it. Whole thing. All right. He is down. Okay. That... Um, hmm, bonus action... Cause this guy's looking worse for where, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll move over well, to him, and I'm gonna hit him with the back end of my my glaive. Well, actually, he's he's been slowed and stuff, but he's yeah, he's still healthy-ish. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna hit him with the my bonus action attack because I did use my attack action. Does that crit? Yes. <laughs> wait, wait, you? Cr oh, because he's paralyzed. He's, yeah, he's paralyzed. yeah, instant crit. So boom, all right, instant crit. Um, let me roll the crit damage. So you roll 2d4 plus 21. Is that what, uh, is yes. that what this is? <laughs> this is such a successful use of old person. <laughs> yeah, this is. Dude, Gr Greg is coming down. in clutch. He really right. is. Uh, that is 28 um, bludgeoning damage, magical bludgeoning damage. All right. Uh, yeah, he takes it and he goes, you hear. <laughs> uh <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you beat this paralyzed man. Oh, no. <laughs> How dare you beat a paraplegic man? <laughs> uh, Noel, are you gonna back up? Oh, do I have to back up? Oh, wink, wink, wink. Oh, is I know there's something in my eye. Five, six, seven. <laughs> yeah. Wait, like in real life or? Uh, Izzy is looking out for you. Oh, got it. Okay. Oh, because oh. you're going to do the thing. I can only move an additional five feet, so I'm stuck there. Okay. okay. Don't worry. I can I can take... The, I I also have bonuses to like all my saving throws, so uh, I can probably so, uh, save. Chav Hunter rolling in here. Uh, what's going on and who's dying? Uh, Not we, our yeah. heroes. Yeah, we just did the recap, but uh, <laughs> this is... Uh, we are fighting... Uh, Dane, who is a fellow Storm, or not Storm, uh, what is your faction called? Oak Striders. My... Oak Striders. Uh, he's a fellow Oak Strider, but he has a completely different plan, uh, one that involves uh, kind of a war and kind of taking over the mm -hmm. continent. Um, and so Nasir had challenged uh, them and his band to a duel uh, in order to convince them. And if, so if they win this fight, then uh, this fellow Oak Strider uh, will will kind of not go to war until they've done that until the players have finished their quest. Um, but if they fail, then Dane's going to go to war, and he's going to ask for you guys to join him. So, and we're not because we got other fish to fry. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not well, losing. Uh, it's with that, all right. <laughs> So you, awesome money, the, yes. That damage was 20 something, 28? Uh, 28. Okay. I want to make sure I record that. <laughs> All right. Yep. Still alive. It hurt, but it's still alive. All right. With that, we are back to the top. Oh, no, we're not. We're uh, not? Yeah. Sorry. My bad. Zilla. It's me. Um, I am going to run over here. Um, oh, I don't get. I don't get sneak attack. You don't get sneak attack for free, but if you uh, do you get advantage when they're paralyzed? Uh, or is it just I, the crit? Uh, let me, here, let me pull, uh, pull it up. Here we go. Uh, I've got it. A paralyzed creature is incapacitated, and when they're incapacitated... Can't take actions. They can't take actions or reactions. The creature automatically fails strength and dexterity throws. Attack rolls against the creature have advantage. So you <gasps> automatically have advantage, which will proc your sneak attack. Yes. And any attack that hits the creature is a critical hit if the attacker is within five feet of the creature. So yes. Oh my God. Free sneak attack. I'm advantage. going to roll um, the hit. Do what's it called? Uh, um, the arcane tricksters get hold person. Yeah. The arcane trickster is. A very cool class. I didn't realize, like, like when I first got, it, I was like, "Ooh, I like the thief." And this was back before all the cool, all the new classes came out in Xanathar's and Tasha's, right? Um, so I, my first one was a thief, uh, which I also really like. But 
Ooh. I was like, illusion. they can only do illusion spells. And now, like, as I'm looking through, like, the spells, I'm like, illusion are, like, some of my favorite ones. Like, because I'm, you know, I'm thinking, like, minor illusion, which are cool. But, like, blur, mirror image, those are also illusion spells. I like dodgy spells. And, of course, that's what the what they're good at. Anyway. So, um, that's a 24 to hit, Miss Sarah. Miss Sarah. Ooh. Okay, that hits. Okay. I am critting on her with my soul dagger, which is the fifth and final one I need to level up. Oh, yes. So I'm doing, okay, so it's double the dice. Okay. So that's 2d4, and that's um, 12d6 <laughs> because he can tax his crit. So I have all of these. <laughs> oh, how does it feel? What is it? What is this? So <laughs> <laughs> I, so Cat, I hope you're here for this <laughs> okay hold on i need to do math real quick yeah matt count those babies up uh, 15 i want you to know she's got like some decent hit points left so like this is this is gonna it's gonna matter that you're sneak attacking and critting right now okay it's not just like oh she's got four and she's gonna die no matter what you do yeah, yeah, yeah. okay that happens um all right, so ten. Oh, Jab Hunter, that hurts. It's only genocide. People find out. Ow, that's it's genocide is bad. Wait. All right, so that's she's sixty damage. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And one hit. Ooh. Oh uh, my God. I put everything into that dagger stab. Including yeah, how, how, tell me how you stab headphones. her. Hold on. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Okay. Tell me how you stab her. Like where, where are you getting her at? Um, I, uh, I run up to her and I just write in like the center of her stomach and I okay. give it a twist. Kind of oh, thing. you twist the knife. Did. And from paralysis, she looks at you uh, with just intense hatred uh, and ire. And she's just, des she despises you as you have stabbed her. Like not only did you bring her her dead son, you didn't save her son. I didn't, but I did it non lethally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you how do you stab do you, yeah. somebody with a knife and then twist it and i say, stab you and twist it and it's non-lethal <laughs> listen it felt good in the moment all right it's one of the it's one of those drama knives that don't really go in <laughs> like the blade goes into the <laughs> it's, it's all psychic it's damage i i i listen i knew i wasn't gonna walk away from this friends with her it's fine <laughs> uh yeah. So I'm not she, trying to kill her, but she looks at you with ire and what you hear out of her mouth is silence. Ooh. That's it. She hates me. <laughs> she doesn't fall over. She's got hit points. Yep. She's got hit points. All right. Cool. She's um, staring at you. You have two daggers, right? Yeah. I do. I could stab action? her I can bonus action stab her again. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. Shoot. Get that glorious 2d4. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the 2d4, no modifier. Add the 12d6. Like uh, he... It's only a 16 to hit. Does that get her? Oh, wait, hold on. Sneak attack is only once a turn, right? Yeah, it's yeah, only once it's... a turn. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it wouldn't be the sneak attack. Uh, be... Yeah, so it's 2d4. What's it called? Um, any attack that hits the creature is a critical hit if the attacker is within five feet, and you have advantage. Oh, so you could try to crit again. Or it's already a crit. It's already a crit because she's paralyzed. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Um, oh, you still have to hit him, though. So, yeah, you roll. Does a, does a 16 hit? Oh, it does not. Then I don't get her. I, oh, I yeah, try I to stab her that. again, but I get her. I where, just like, like, assume you hit, but yeah, I know. Right, where she has armor. Mm hmm. So I just. Well. She just continues to stare at you. And. It's Reggie's turn. Oh, it's Reds. So it's me again. Hang on. So Reggie goes 
and uh, he's a T-Rex. And <laughs> uh, he's not. A, he's not a T-Rex. He's not. Oh, he's not. That's right. He doesn't yeah, do that. He, he turned back because uh, Greg stopped concentrating on polymorph. He's gonna run up. Well, Reggie goes Rah! like he's still a T-Rex. I need. I need to hear your Reggie accent. Um, it was like a Cogni accent, right? Something like that. Australian. Something like that. Was it Australian? It was like an Australian. Is, it was a blend of a lot of things. All right. So like, <laughs> this is Reggie, right? So like Reggie. In is, it. Uh, in it. Reggie in it. He, he's going to do an attack, I think. And um, he's got his Albert. So he's going to go over here. Where is, yeah, there he is. And he's, he's going to hit Sarah. Uh, he's going to, well, he's going to try. There we go. Yeah, he has advantage. Oh, he does. Mm -hmm. He didn't do that well. So it's <laughs> a 12 to hit. Uh, he misses. Yeah. So he, he, in his fumbling to remember that he's not a dinosaur anymore, he doesn't do very well. So yeah, he had his hands out like this and tried to. Attack. Yeah, like, Wait a second. <laughs> 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 so he's still recovering from being polymorphed and uh yeah he misses uh wait does he have can he he doesn't have extra attack he doesn't have any okay not uh, yet not till next level okay then that's his turn okay that's his oh, turn wait. well halbert doesn't halbert have a hold on halbert has a 10 foot reach so back him up five feet and that'll be his turn there you go that's it. All right. Okay. Good turn, Reggie. I said, I'll try my best. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, oh, Greg. <laughs> uh, all right. I'm so, in my mum's car. Brum, off, brum. Guest. <laughs> off. Okay. Uh, slow boy. Is he still slow? I'm trying to remember why he was slow. He's Just slow cause... because he's the last in initiative and he was he had like a zero and that's initiative. right that's right <laughs> so that's why he's like he's not okay mechanically that's just a slow. nickname uh yeah. <laughs> at the end of his turn he does pass his wisdom saving throw and so you see him start to and uh yeah he's going to yeah you see him continue to draw his bow back okay all right with that uh, we're back at the top with greg you know, so Greg, man, is just going to run up here and tr try to, you know, use his old verdant vanquisher on Sarah there. And so let me see what that does. He approaches, you see Sarah look over at him. Uh, like, she already talked to him last time and was just like, she was trying to convince him. And now she just looks pleadingly like, really? We're, like, <laughs> yeah, like, even you, like, we're not. Like you're not on my side on this. I, I thought, I thought we were agreed. I thought we both served Arbathod. That's she communicates all that in a look. And um, insert. She's a mom. She insert insert Dave's opinion here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that because he I would really have like he would have something. And to then say. Yeah. bonk um, with the Verdon Vanquisher, man. Oh, that was so close. Uh, that's a dirty twenty, but the other one um, was it. It it's an eight, which twenty is right next to. You. I could have crit with Gruagok. Uh, oh, but you did. Wouldn't that be so, great, man? Um, so this could be two d eight plus two. But she's still. Ooh, good. that's a good. Yeah, that's a crit though. So it is. Uh, that is a fifteen damage to her. Okay. Uh, oh, hydrate. Oh, we're hydrating. Thanks, Masamune. I know, like my throat, like my mouth has been dry. I've been kind of hydrating a lot. Thank you. Hydration is good. It's very, very good. Especially since it's August in California. <laughs> yes. Uh, how are you doing this non-lethally or are you trying to put her yes. in the best saving throws? Non-lethally, just bonk on the head, trying to knock her out. Okay, bonk on the head. Uh, she does collapse um, and pass out. Stable, though. She'll sleep it off, man. She's not going to forgive me. <laughs> nope. That's 
Fine. Right. <laughs> um, and then Greg's going to look around. How is the other elf uh, doing? Oh, I, it's fine. Greg has healing, but I, I, Greg's going to just back up and pass the turn. Or wait, no, he doesn't have any more movement. Never mind. All right. So with that, uh, it's Blixa. And then, yeah, Sarah's good. So All right, the Blixa Rangers will make that same going impress. to move up. And Lily is going to follow. And sorry, Nolan. That's um, fine. But <clears throat> uh, I am going to use my action to command Lily uh, to do Drake's Breath, uh, which Ooh. she ex exhales a 30-foot cone of cold breath. Um, each creature in the cone must make a deck save of 14, and then they take damage. I rolled a 21. They rolled a 25. No. No. Sorry. Ow. So uh, you still take half. Okay. Uh, so let me get my calculator up. I oh, wait, I automatically fail these because, oh, yeah, he's not paralyzed anymore. Ha! Mm -hmm. One win for you. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Slow boy. Slow boy. Like, I wasn't slow. I was observing the battlefield. I was um, strategizing. <laughs> <laughs> was... Mid. All yeah, right. So. Mid bow is like, whoo, dips and uh, dodges. I rolled a, uh, that's 45 damage. So it's um, 22, 23. Are we rounding up or down? Uh, you round down and, and less okay, specify. 22, 22 cold damage. Oh my gosh, that was so much damage. How often can you do that? Just once. Per short rest, long rest? Long rest. Wow, that's ever. pretty she, awesome. Once ever, she wasted it on this guy. <laughs> And how does so that's a, is that a bonus action for you to command Lily? Action, action. No, uh, action? Drake's breath is an action. I can I can either command my Drake or I can do it. Wow, that's way cool. Uh, Ranger three is frozen into a crystal and is effectively dead. They're yeah, they're making death saving throws. So, is there anybody else up? I don't think that's it, right? All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, there, everybody on their team is now making death saving throws. Do okay. you let them die? Except for Sarah. Sarah's stable. Um, so, I, can I stay? If I do one hit point of them, is that going to stay? No, that doesn't stabilize them. That brings them back up to one, right? I think you have to do like a medicine check yeah. or something. Yeah, you can, do a, um, you can do a medicine check to just to stabilize them, or right. any amount of healing automatically stabilizes and then brings them back. Yeah. Me and Greg will do medicine checks. Okay. Um, I will. Greg will go over to Elf Boy. I'll go over to the uh, the other Elf, and I roll a. That is a nineteen. Uh, Greg rolls a. a a sixteen. Okay. Uh, yeah, you only need a ten to stabilize somebody. Uh, so they 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 both stabilize, um, including the the one that we took off the board. Um, Got it. They're going to be stabilized as well. And Dane actually stands back up. Um, he, so I mean he he's, I guess he well he, he kind of passes out, but then he chooses to uh, heal himself with his. So, just for role play purposes oh. um the dude's just got a lot of grit and he passed all of his saving throws and so he's gonna he's gonna stand back up but he is not fighting you um and says well done you have beaten us we will abide the wager you promise and sorry what did you say and you promise I'm a man of my word. I promise you will not go to war until you, until either, until you have either completed your quest or until you die. Eunicear, if I feel that you have died, then I will continue my path. You're not going to aid us in fighting off Nick's 
You're gonna stay here, hidden away. As as you guys Why? are having this conversation, the the floor is rising again, um, to uh, so you guys can be in full view and ear of the Ard Canair. Because it had it had dropped down um, to kind of feel, mm -hmm. form that battle arena, and then so now you guys are kind of back in the throne room with the the three Ard Canair surrounding you, Laurel in front, uh, Ryla mm -hmm. with the cloak of leaves over your left shoulder, and Rond uh, with the headdress of antlers over your right shoulder. Um, he says, "I will like my role is to be here and to protect those faithful." Those who have kept their oaths, um, here in the Valakan Wood. How oh. and how do you expect to go on this great conquest? You're afraid to fight against great darkness. You've seen what the people of this world can do. Just with my companions. Like I'm not afraid. He's like I'm not afraid, brother. Then why aren't you fighting alongside us? The whole world should be involved in this fight. And as you are asking this question from over your right shoulder, Rond asks another one. He's like, we will lose our chance. The high elves are weak now. If we do, if we do not march now, then we will, we will lose our chance to, to overthrow them. And to be fair, we are going against quite a few high elves, just not for the same reasons. And he says, and so uh, Dane responds back to Rond. And says, is, uh, is it, if my brother and his fellow heroes succeed in their quest in uniting the world and bringing peace to it, then if we march on the high elves, we would be seen as villains. And we would not be offering, it's like, and the oaths and promises and the salvation that we offer would not be seen as salvation, but would be seen as petty uh, opportunism. It's like, brother, the reason why I stay back is that should you fail, I will enact my plan. I believe what you're, you, I believe I, that you're- I, I fail against Nixilis, and Nixilis is there unheeded. You're going to march on the High Elves. I'm going uh, to march on- all of our Volothel, if war be. has been a tool to be able to bring races mm -hmm. together against the greater evil. You don't think that if we all fought together, we could come to an agreement? Think of the Badlands. The Badlands are this horrid waste. The High Elves could plant there again. We could bring life back to them and make it a great forest. And the I'm sorry, the Wood Elves. The Wood Elves could have a vast forest south of. of all the rock tooth mountains yet you seek land that's already taken but there's so much of our voluthel still ripe for the taking that's just untamed you don't think that our people could come to an agreement after this our our people i believe that our people have all all of this the collective peoples other than the Sylvan here in the Valachan Wood, and and those of our tribe that remain in the ancient forest, everyone has forgotten the old ways. And we'll give them a, a, give them a reason to remember by standing against evil. Remind them why we're here. I am standing against evil. I'm just doing it in my way. You're hiding Brother, in a forest, plotting against high elves. I'm keeping the oath. There is to you. literally a demon trying to claw its way into our world and you're plotting against mortals. How does that make sense? I'm positive I, the queen could see some kind of reason to honor a, a truce against the, our people and grant land to be split. There's so many political things that could happen between this, but again, this shouldn't be what we're focusing on. We should be focusing on Nixilis. We should be focusing on General Veldarin and the Black Hand. But no. And where, you're, you're, brother, where does Nixilis draw his power? It's 
Threats are all around us. And yes, the politics of mortals can rise from threats, but nothing world-ending. The world will always go on. The body that... The bodies littered from war will be planted into the ground and trees will grow from them. But that doesn't mean that we should we should be in control and reset that ourselves. One day, everyone around us will pass on and new life will grow. But Nixilis plans to destroy it all. If Nixilis gets his way and we just say, hey, it's because of the stars, then... We've lost it all. Arbathad will have no power. If you Please roll a persuasion. I've fin make your point. Finish, uh, finish making all the case that you would like, and then please roll a persuasion check. That was basically. I'm going to use my inspiration point. I didn't mean to cut point. you off. I thought you, I thought okay. you were done. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my inspiration point to roll with advantage. Okay. 25. Wow. Okay. Uh, you needed a 19. He... You look at him as he considers your words. He says, this has been my dream for so long a vision of a world united in the worship of Arbathod. And I see this or have seen this as an opportunity to show how returning to the old ways can make a difference, to show the sharp contrast between the dissension that we've allowed to come between us and really unite all of our world with those one people under one belief. But I will not be seen as a coward. I will not let this demon run free unchallenged and before now no one has had a strong has been stronger or had a more refined will than my own but brother I'm impressed by the strength of your, by your, of your will and how you have refined your character. We are two seeds have... from the same tree, brother. Our roots grow deep. We are very headstrong. The winds may sway us, but only... The three of us that can have any chance of kind of pushing the other one any direction. I want us to be able to live long and enjoy life, but right now we can't we can't divide ourselves. When something is trying to take everything away from us. You're right. You're absolutely right. And when I asked you where does where does Nixilis draw his power, I realized that in my strong headedness. I was inadvertently feeding him. Or he draws his power from the chaos around us, from the chaos of the situation. And 
me trying to bring order while I still believe in noble pursuit would only in, in this case uh, make him stronger as it would only add to the chaos of the situation. So this... as much as it pains me, I will join you in your quest. And I reach out my hand. I'm glad we could come to a conclusion on this. And I believe we can find peace in our time. It's going to take time, and it's going to take a different route. Take a lot of talking. going to take a lot of Senate hearings and so forth, but after we, we need to save the damn world before we can even think of all that. He's like, he's like, uh, and you see him like, he, he kind of opened up a little bit, right? And he's like, I mean, he's been straightforward and honest to you the entire time, but like, you see him just kind of let his guard down a little and um, be vulnerable. And he says, the what what's been so hard for me about this situation and what's and what the reason i have resisted so much because brother i want to be on the same side as you uh you're my elder brother uh what what younger brother doesn't dream of both besting their older brother but also fighting alongside their elder brother and i want i don't want to fight against you but i what what has been hard for me to grasp is if you win, the, the problem that I see with, with you winning is that it will return us back to the status quo of everyone. Each nation will stay where it is and will still have their own petty squabbles and disputes. And the vision of the world that I had was one where, yes, it would be painful to bring about, but we'd be unified after afterwards as, at least as much as any one people can be but i see now that you have to look at the situation from outside high elves demons and humans are working together maybe i don't know who else is there the high elves are torn apart they're having a civil war right now the humans are kicked out of their capital the, the wandering wood and our people are fighting back in the ancient forest. This is the time for change. After this, the world is going to reform. It's going to adapt to what has happened. But history is decided by the victors. We do not do anything. Nixilis will write history. <laughs> you took the words out of my mouth, brother. History does is written by the victors. And not only that, but they the victors claim is to be able to lead the the direction of of, of the people uh, towards their vision of the world. And so this is the question that I that I want to ask you all of you. Uh because if I'm going to relinquish my quest in order to not strengthen Nixilis, and if I'm going to join you, then I need to know what is the vision of the world that you're fighting for, not just to beat Nixilis, because once he's done, once if, if you're able to overcome him, but once the, once the threat is removed, people will look to you for guidance and for leadership. They will look to know what is the vision of the world you would create. So I ask you, what is your vision of the world? Where will you lead us? Because if you don't have a clear picture, we will only fall further into chaos once you have removed the threat. I see harmony. I see the lighting. And... I see life. But that would take 
much more than just my vision. It takes the actions of many people. We have to rally them and be that example. Because if we can make it out on the other side of this, with everyone behind us fighting for one goal, then those people can come together and find harmony in our time. Like, in our, are we unified in this? What is, I, I would hear from your companions as well. What is their vision of the world if it were given them to decide? <laughs> so what you so Greg's going to speak up, man, and just say he wants to legalize it, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's it for Greg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just like, well, first off, I feel that this could be a win for you, too. Not in the way that you saw it before. But if you go to war against Nicholas in the name. Yeah. In the name of Arvathod, I think many people would be inspired to return to the old ways and worship him as you worship them as you do. And I think that in your victory, you can go and spread the word and and teach people, reteach people the old ways and not threaten them. Because I don't think that worshiping Arvathod coming from a place of fear for their life, it's not going to be a pure worship anyway. The kind of world that I see would have people caring for their fellow man and children wouldn't go hungry. Elderly would be respected. So on and so forth. We would look out for each other. And I don't think it would be it would be a philanthropic world to the point where it wouldn't be seen as volunteering it would just be how it is just we just look out for each other that's the kind of world i want to see and i would follow that man anywhere to do it and i point at this here i nod in agreement And uh, he does look at you, uh, Blixa, and say, agreement is good. Um, But I would hear, I'm curious, what is the world that you fight for? Why why are you here? I mean, just to follow a strong leader, yes, but what is is your vision of the world if, if it were on you? Because in that question, one finds the truth of their will and how strong it is. And you will and you will finally understand where your limits are and what you're willing to sacrifice in order to achieve your goals. So I ask you, I, I'm I am curious if you if you would share with me what is your vision of the, of the what is the vision of the world that you fight for? I am, I am a, a mere mortal. So to sit here and talk about what I want for the world, I can only do by action. I cannot do by word. But I know that what I seek is for the people and the creatures to have acceptance, to be who they are 
naturally and their choice to choose. And so our, our alignment is, is different on that. But it is my belief that if that's who you choose to be, then I, I cannot stop you in that instance. But I know that I, I would do anything to protect my family. And so if my family leads me to the heart of Nixilis, I, I will be there. Um, and I just, you know, I, I don't have very much, there's not a want for the world. It's, it's a want for the people because without the people, there is not a world. Noble words all. I thank you for them. They allow me to get to know my compatriots better. Uh, brother and Art Kinnair, uh I will join you, brother, in your quest. Where would you have me in your war? We need to hold back the orcs and all of General Veldarin's forces. If you could take a force and reinforce the ancient wood and help the wandering wood, we have a few stops along the, the Rocktooth Mountains before we head to Cornwall is where the humans are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If we can rally the humans as best we can and either take back um, Valencia. V- Valentis. Valentis? Yeah. Or Valencia even... is the kingdom. Valentis is the capital. Yeah, that's right. We could... Uh, I, I need to see the situation <clears throat> from the ground. I, I'm not sure what's currently happening, but we have a few stops in the Rocktooth Mountains before we can join. Um, at this, Scarlet uh, actually jumps into the conversation. She says, uh, and she's like, and uh, this is actually one the reason that I came to find you. Um, I know that the she's like was to give a report on what is happening in Valentis and to see if if this was or in Valencia and see if this is uh, well, and to ask your help if it would if if you are willing and able, um, but. Lord Dougherty, uh, your 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 warnings from Zalara did reach us, um, and Ambrose uh, has has long been suspicious of Lord Dougherty, um, and feared that he was plotting against the king. However, right now, Lord Dougherty, I mean, with with Cornwall serving as the surrogate capital while Valentis has been taken. And with Lord Dowdy having control over the troops and the food and the capital, he is currently king in all but name. And if the and King Darius cannot oppose him or depose him, because if he did, it would divide, it would create a civil war on amongst amongst those in Valencia. And then we would be powerless against the forces of Eldarin, uh, who are marching on us daily. Um, we can only we can only just hold them back. And so Ambrose dispatched me to give you this report and to ask uh, and to see what your what your plan is and what your next steps would be. Um, and and that's where and then Laurel jumps in and says this is the meeting for or the, the reason for this meeting was twofold uh, one to seek your guidance on the matter for we were divided in mind um, and I would like to know the will of us the Ard Kinnair so that we might know how we may best uh, of what mind we are that we may best serve in this purpose 
So if you'll allow, I'd like to take a vote of the Ard Canair and then discuss options as to what, uh, how we may aid you and where you will be um, in, and where you decide to go next. Uh, so she, she says, Ryla, Rond, I call for the vote. Ryla, you have, you have held that we should be isolationist and that should, we should hold back and defend our people in, this, in these times. Um, I have sought for diplomacy. Um, and Rond, uh, you have sought to, uh, towards a, a nationalistic ideal, ideal of, and subscribing with the Oath Keepers, and then uh, kind of advancing uh, of the worldview, our, our view through war, advancing our power, expanding our power through war. Um, I would hear how you each vote now. Uh, Rond speaks up first and says, my opinion, although that of Dane and his Oath Keepers has changed, uh, my opinion has not. Uh, I still think that it is best for us to march against the High Elves. Um, and then Ryla speaks up and says, I have been moved uh, by, by the debate that we have seen, both in conflict and in words. And I see that if we, the Sylvan people, are going to participate in the world stage and not be seen as outcasts and hideaways, then we must participate in the world stage. And though our culture may change, may morph as we continue to engage with those outside, I believe that the risk is too great not to. Um, and that we will not only be able to strengthen our allies, but be made stronger by them. So I change my vote from isolation to diplomacy. Um, allies, but and Laura, Laurel finishes and says, thank you. I uh, maintain my vote of diplomacy. And as speaker for the Art Canair, I declare this the mind of the Art Canair. Do we, do we all speak in agreement? And they all tap their um, tap their their staves on the on on the on the ground on the oak, and and say I. Although Ron says it a little bit reluctantly, he does he does say I, and he agrees. And this is now he respects the, the votage. He respects <laughs> the votage. He's, he, while stubborn in, in his own way, he does love his people and respect his people, and he is a leader, mm -hmm. um, and. He got outvoted and he will follow the vote of of the people uh, of the leadership so this is this is how their their people are ruled and and how they and they have decided uh so it's like this, we are now unified um in our purpose as a people and we thank you all for for your help in uh and your in, in your guidance in this and these and these matters um it sounds like you have made your decision, uh, but uh, the, to go to the Rocktooth Mountains first, um, kind of weighing all of your options. Uh, what it, uh, yeah, we would like to we would like to aid you. Um, we can get you to the edge of our. Um, we have yeah, we can prepare you and help get you to the edge of our borders, um, and maybe a little further depending on where you decide to go. Um, so, uh, just. If you, what are, she's like, I also fear, um, and this should be discussed. Uh, yeah, our enemies are powerful and they have conspired long for these, for these events. Uh, I do fear that, I fear what plots may unravel in the places that you do not go. Uh, so please choose wisely what your next step will be for it will de to determine future events. So please weigh your options carefully and choose with your hearts where you feel you must go. 
and we're here Thank to you. assist you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Scarlett's like, so what is your guys' plan? Uh, what do you, I mean, we've got. We got three stops to make. <laughs> Rock Tooth Mountains. Um, I thought we had decided on an order. It was. But then it was that ominous warning of like, we should be careful where we go. So now I'm like, do we go to Hesperos first or do we? <laughs> Hesperos knows. Um, what does Hesperos now? Jeez, it was so long. Like, we just it was like three ses sessions ago, but something just happened. Something about the staff, right? How to activate the star? Yeah. Or... So the in order to unlock the staff of the or so in order to unlock the power of the divine star itself. Um, so you have Veldarn currently has the staff of power and he is rumored to be, I mean, he, his, his people have taken the capital of Lintus. So that's where he's believed to be. Um, the staff is a great symbol, but it doesn't have the magic power until the staff, until the divine star, which you guys have in Azazel's possession. It's, um, I remember I, I took it. I have it on the, okay. um, it's like the gem around my necklace. That's right. Yeah, you have it. So yeah, you have it. Um, so you have this, the star, um, it's, it's magic is not unlocked. And so once you unlock the, the staff of the divine, or you have to unlock the, the divine star at Hesperos, and then it will have that mat. Uh, you guys would be able to wield it and use it in this fight. Um, it is, it has the power to morph and change reality itself. Um, and is a very powerful, uh, not a symbol and magic artifact. Um, that was given by the gods to uh, to Zoram, the god king of Zalara. Um, the yeah, so that's Hesperos. So if, uh, if you go to Hesperos, then you will unlock the divine star, and you will have um, you'll uh, uh, and actually it's at this moment that Dane speaks up uh, real quick and says, uh, "Brother, I see that." You have not yet kind of reclaimed many of your memories from your past lives. Do you know the locations of the remaining temples of the Order of the Ancients? Mm. No. There is one. Uh, Hesperos knows the location of one of these temples. Uh, as And he will... I'm sure he would like to tell you why uh, more about that, but uh, you know so Hesperos. He, I know of Hesperos. I've not met him in this body. I'm, I haven't met him in many lives, um, but I know of him, and. So he, he will be able to inform you of the Dragonstone Monastery, uh, which was the former headquarters of the Order of the Ancients in ancient times. Uh, then you have already cleared uh, the Hawthorne Throne here in the Valachan Wood and the Mausoleum of Solace that was in Valencia. There is the Tomb of the Star Child in Zolara, which... I believe was this the resting place of your dear friend is Aziel. I don't know if there's much for you left there as that was from well, what I understand to, where to, Cyrelin had laid him. To my understanding, each temple has a artifact of uh Excellent. No, what's the other guy's name? Um, oh, uh, 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 sorry. Ar something. Mm. It's not Ariac. That's a different Abaroth? character. Abroth. No, no, no. Yeah, it's Abroth. Oh, no. So Abroth is the other name, but they are artifacts of Nixlus. Oh, artifacts of Nixlus. Nixlus. Okay. Um, Azazel. Is that the name I was thinking? Uh, acquired the artifact there and at Alaric. An, That's um, what I was thinking. Sorry. At another site as well. Correct. Uh, I believe, like, I believe Azazel 
still has on his possession the artifact that he was entombed with. I, I have both. Okay. Then those then those have been cleansed. Um, so the two that remain will be the Dragonstone Monastery in the Rock and the Rocktooth Mountains and Armageddon's grave in the Badlands. Has anyone been to Dragonstone Monastery? Not in many years. We've had a vision. Um, dear old friend of ours, Randall Stagg, has a large set of clones somewhere in the Rocktooth Mountains. Seems like a good hideout. This is a this is troubling news to me. Uh, I act, I do not know of this Randall Stag or of his clones. He well, sends, he's a troublesome character, to put it lightly. Yeah, he <laughs> he sent the uh, the displacer beast after me and Greg uh, on my beginnings of my journey, and it was the one that slayed us. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so you did die. Yeah, I've died a few times. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to have you. It's been back, a brother. it's been a rough road. <laughs> well, I'm I'm glad you're here, and and it's obviously made you stronger. Uh, yes. Yeah, so that that is the input that I can provide. That those are the locations of the final two temples that need to be yet cleansed. The uh, I have a hats off question. I'm sorry. Oh, I was that. writing stuff down. Did you, you say so? The Dragonstone Monastery was headquarters of what? Uh, the uh, it was one of the it was the former headquarters of the oath of the or the Order of the Ancients. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's it. So yeah, he says uh, that that's the input that I can provide, um, and. I forgot. There's something I was saying, but it's I can't more info than we had before. So thank you. Of course. Every little piece of the puzzle helps. Um. So, yeah. What is the? I guess. And then uh, Scarlet says, "We. You may have already cleansed our temple, but there are. If you can, we are the force that's holding back Veldarin." at the moment and our force is very weak if you would if you could help remove uh lord cornwall uh the lord dowerty um or and help us if you can help us unify the people in valentia then we can weaken his hold there and remove him from his stronghold so that veldarin will will be weaker um, and will not be able to be uh, such an imposing presence. Uh, and it seems like Veldarn is kind of the one of the one of the chief piece corner pieces of Azazel's or of not Azazel. That is Slice. not yeah. That is not a hint. That is not. That's just Slip long of fantasy time. name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the of Nixilus's, uh power. So of his plan, um, so I, I'm so uh, like I don't. If you want to help us, you could gain more allies and kind of help push back in that way to make you stronger. Uh, we could provide you additional resources um, and artifacts to help in your quest against. Uh, you see, to go clear the other two temples. You think I could just wish for your dad to not be such a dick? Maybe he... <laughs> I don't think that's specific enough. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe more of a dick would help, and then he just turns into this like phallic <laughs> monstrosity, <laughs> the penis monster. Um, <laughs> I just we're so close to the Rock Tooth Mountains. It's like, mm -hmm. so what all do we have to do? That we have to go see Hesperos. We have to find. Uh, the Dragonstone Monastery. We have to find uh, Randall Stagg's clone hideout, which could be the same thing as the monastery. We don't know. We'll find out when we it's get not. there. Uh, you guys and, do know that they are two separate places. Well, that's three. And then there was a fourth thing. There's another thing. Uh, yeah, there the ancient force is currently under attack by armies of orcs and dragons. 
No, at the Rock Tooth Mountains. I, I oh, swear to Arbathad, if no, Gronk is. is there as some <laughs> war chief, <laughs> I'm gonna kill that damn war. Got a bone to pick. <laughs> Gronk, you're supposed to be good. <laughs> Um, well, why not? <laughs> so, I try to think. There, Rock Tooth Mountains. I don't. I, I remember there being. I mean, three Randall. Things. You guys knew that Randall Stag was there and his mm-hmm. clones. You guys know Hesperos, mm-hmm. right? I and thought there was a, a third thing before the monastery. There's a. There's another thing. I don't remember what it was. I but... mean, that's also where the Dwarven capital is, Iron Mark in the south. <sighs> It was like a mission. It was like, we have to go here. And it's to get the staff. Like, wasn't the staff located in the Rock Tooth Mountains? mountains the well? staff was located in the Hawthorne throne, which is why Veldarn killed mm-hmm. Grint. Uh, Veldarn and Nora. But, like, and when we Randall. tried to scry it again, it, it, ha- it led us to the Rock Tooth Mountains, right? Yes. Yes. When you scried it at the time, it was in the Rock Tooth Mountains. Oh, Mountain. okay. That had to have been it then. Yes. That's, okay. that's a piece of information. Okay. Um, We're good. One thing off our list. Great. <laughs> well, Scarlet, how many days? Do either you th- that or it's a hint. Scarlet, how many days do you think Cornwall has? I don't know. She's. I give it a month, maybe. That's less. I, a few weeks. We'll have to buy by that time if if we do not get this staff. And do not activate this star. We won't have uh, enough to fight against Nixilis. And if we focus our attention more on... uh, Veldarin is an issue. But on the scale of things, it's... We need to make sure we have we have get the staff and know how to activate it before Nixilis is brought back to power. So I... If the the Sylvan people are able to to aid in any way, I don't know what help Cornwall would take, but I know that the ancient forest, once that's driven back, they would assist in the war against Vildarin. If they survive. That's it's one of the many probabilities, this whole thing. All of us have to make sacrifices and do our best to survive. And make sure we come out of this. But no, you're absolutely right. And I, I'm only here to provide information um, and to, and to, yeah, to help you all to make the most informed decision you can about where, uh, where you want to go next. Okay. Well, I say Rock Tooth Mountains, and try to hurry. Hesperos and then weird uh, clone cave. That, that's uh, you guys know that clone cave is actually uh, based. Uh, you guys received this information earlier uh, when you scried uh, at the. I, I think actually using the dragon stone that Izzy has. It's to the south, but, right? Of yeah. So the the clone cave, the location of the clone cave that you guys remember was in the kind of southern rock tooth mountains it is closer to you now and then hesperos is actually further north closer to like the middle of the continent well i mean the um Valent- valentis is south too right south valentis is north so if you're looking at like oh. the map if you're looking at like the whole map of- you haven't made a map so i always picture I know, it being I know. like opposite why, of what you ever you would describe yeah I, and, <laughs> and i'm directionally challenged as well so like i can't envision things i need a picture so for everybody and i hope this i don't know if this is reversed or not is this okay so Probably. is this east does this look like sure. east to everybody mm, technically that's west if you like it looks like east to me okay no uh, yeah no you're right that yeah. is west okay so this looks like west to you yeah. all right but i just need that so i can say so i know which hand to differentiate yeah. on okay so in the west uh you've got zalara in the northwest and then you've got uh the you've got the vlakan wood in the southwest right That's where we are which is where you guys are. However, you have also traveled pretty like you're kind of more south 
than west at the at the moment, uh, which is where our Beth Noel is. So you're closer okay. to the Rock Tooth Mountains now. So we were Arizona, now we're Texas. <laughs> That's what you're saying. We're heading. Sure. Yeah. Um, we're heading then, to <laughs> Indiana. <laughs> yeah. Then on the east, you've got in the northeast, you have uh, Valencia, the Human Kingdom, and then in the uh, in the south. Uh, east you've got the badlands right and then on the border there is where you have like the ancient forest and haven where everybody started and then actually further north like real north from north northeast uh from valentis is where you actually have freehold uh which is where the little bandit or the little clan of thieves that you used to be a part of larissa where they fled to uh north of valentis Okay. Um, and then there's an island off the north of the continent that is, it's the Isle of Scribes. That's where Arch Sage University is, where Professor Carventus is from. Um, and then, so the the Wait. points, yeah, kind of the points you guys are looking at right now is you've got like the Rocktooth Mountains run through the middle of the continent and the southern-ish part of the Rocktooth Mountains. Uh, you've got Clone Cave and the middle of the rock tooth mountains you have uh the dragonstone monastery then kind of north uh sorry i probably went the other i probably went the wrong direction just because i'm thinking um i'm not reversing it anymore um yeah and so then you've got valentis and the badlands so going up the mountain would be like clone cave monastery hesperos Valentis. Valentis. Yeah. So once, it, yeah. And then you'd go to like Northeast from the monastery to get uh, to Valentis. Or somehow we just teleport into the middle of Valentis and just go ham. Uh, Laurel says, we do have transport via plants. Um, this is one of the boons that we were going to give you was um, I, you are. I'm familiar yeah. with a tree in uh, Valentis. Okay. Well, this tree here is also very protected, so you would not be able to get back here without our permission. So we will be granting you express express permission uh, to use transport by, via plants to enter our Beth Noel. If you, uh, this is something that's only reserved for the Ard Canair, um and high level uh, high level ambassadors of people that we trust. I mean, if you're granting it, <laughs> so, uh, she does that, and like she. Uh, taps your staff and casts a spell real quick and you all feel like a green light around you and then you hear the uh, the tree <laughs> kind of moan or like give a groan of acceptance Whoa. Um, so if you guys have access to transport by plants you can now transport in and out of this tree um, so yes uh, I don't know if Dave gets that yet that may be next level Maybe. Uh, that is actually, yeah, now that we're talking levels, uh, four, uh, you guys have had uh, a major, major, like a double major victory here. Um, a, you uh, kind of the, the main goal here was to confront and learn about uh, Dane and then choose where to go. So what you guys, act, you know, what you did in A, not only stopping him, stopping him would have been a major victory because then he would have just kind of protected and solidified this area. But then you went above and beyond and got him to actually join you. Um, and and then, I mean, yeah. And so now and now you're choosing where to go. So, I mean, you guys have done, have gone way above and beyond um, in, in this area and have really made a huge difference. Oh, yeah. And then you also convinced the Wood Elves to not, you know, not to go to war, but also not to stay isolationist, but to also get involved, um, which is huge. Um, we convinced Switzerland to help us. <laughs> you did. You really did. It's awesome. Um, and I mean, you guys I'm giving directed... credit to Azaziel. Or, I mean, I'm this year. Sorry. To all yeah. of you guys. No, you all did it. You really did. All did it as a team. Remember when uh, Azaziel was dead and Nasir was not reborn yet or was not resurrected and you guys were like already like having this debate with dane as he was walking you here like That's you true. guys did that 
it's true. We laid the groundwork <laughs> and <laughs> for this whole conversation. And, and, and if your guys's visions, like if you didn't have a clear vision of the world, like he was totally going to confront you on that. Like, all right, what the heck do you believe? Like, what? Am, why should I even fight for that? But the fact that you guys did, I mean, we're able to express that means means that he was willing to ally with you guys. So this is yes. I mean, this year did a wonderful job, uh, and especially in kind of calling out that duel because. I didn't have like a preordained, this is how the solution, this is how this is going to get resolved. I trusted you guys to come up with the solution and, and you did, uh, you convinced me, which convinced Dane. So you guys, awesome. you guys won that. Um, you kicked its ass. Hey, oh, Wolf Child. Thank you. Oh my God. You guys are awesome. Um, the titties for the titties. Oh. <laughs> Why did you have a <laughs> uh, So with that, yes, you guys level up. Uh, Yay! To 13. And uh Dave, when you get back, Reggie gets two levels. Ooh. Heck yeah. Reggie Reggie bomb bomb. Reggie will be level six. Yeah, Reggie will be level six. So level we'll two. let Dave level up Greg and, and Reggie when he gets back. But uh, you guys are free yeah. to level up right now. Um let's say my, my do we dagger want to do a bio break for that uh, it's a little early but um do you guys want some time to look at your stuff or do we want to do that on stream i could use the restroom yeah okay. I, could, I could use a bio break all right cool so we will take a bio break let the players level up and then we'll kind of jump back in and figure out where we're going to go and how we're going to get there cool beans. so uh we'll be back at 6 50 pacific time
All right. Well, paladins don't get that many good fourth level spells. Staggering smite's not bad. I know, but like it's the thing you like. You want there to be other re like that. You want there to be a nice balance between. Hmm. I don't have to always use my smite, <laughs> but now it's always a smite. What does Daisy get right now? Oh, can can they hear us? Oh, they can't. They can hear me. Yes, I'm planning level up, but we'll be back.
than 650. Yeah, we did. Hey! Welcome back, everybody. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the two high priority options right now. This way, so, that way, I don't know. You tell me. Wait, hold on. Yeah. Nolan, does that does that poll allow you to do more than two options? Oh. Oh, okay, so the prediction can only do two, but the poll can do anyway. Two people can... already voted for going after. Well, Randall's I mean, it sounds like you guys have the reason the this is like this is because you guys have already decided you're gonna go to Rock Two Fountains first, right? Which we should have that conversation yeah. in front of the audience. Um and then so this is once they go to the Rock Tooth Mountains, where in the Rock Tooth Mountains do they want to go for? Should they go first? You need to talk to Hesperos about a bunch of things. Um, and we need to find Randall Stagg's hideout where he has hidden a, a room full of clones. Just you endless Randall Stags. You don't have to. We don't have to, but he keeps coming after me. <laughs> so... <laughs> He's left you alone for quite a while. He has, and it's suspicious. And I, he could, because he can change his face. I don't like it. You know what? I think he is in this very room. (laughs) 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 All right. right, So I'm, 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 I'm honestly waiting to, for the poll to end. So. Uh, before we move forward because i want to know what... there was some sort of fine print on like the deck of many things card and he's been reggie the whole time <laughs> oh that's that'd be a cool idea What's reggie's last name <laughs> <laughs> oh shit <laughs> reggie Love stab <laughs> All right, it looks like we okay. got five votes for Randall Stag Dungeon, one vote for Hesperos Cave. So I think we have a destination. Okay. <sighs> don't give the DM ideas. <laughs> I usually don't, but. <laughs> oh, I have. We've already made it this far. It's yeah. true. It happens a lot, honestly, where you're just like, but what if this happened? You're like, oh, what if that happened? <laughs> that, that should totally happen. Um, <laughs> Anyway, that would be the ultimate know. betrayal. <laughs> uh, just so you guys know, I did uh, I did text Dave before the session started and to let him know kind of what the five options were, um, and he let me know that his vote was also to go to the Rock Tooth Mountains. So um, we are all good there. All right, cool. Okay. All right, so we let's get back in the scene. Uh, you guys are, yeah, you're here in front of the Ard Kinnair. Um, They've just decided they're going to support you guys and work towards diplomacy with the other nations. Um, they're asking you where you guys want to go. You were weighing your options. And you guys have now decided Rock Tooth Mountains, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, Laurel steps in and says, if, if you have decided, um, we will do anything, everything in our power to, to get you there. Um, what is, uh, I guess, yeah, so you guys have decided you're going to go to the, this location in the south? Do you, I can get you to the closest tree that you have seen before. Um, so where's the closest tree that you've seen to the south of the Rock Tooth Mountains? Um, where was that forest that Lily and I were hunting in? Was that close to the Rock Tooth Mountains? Oh, uh, are you talking about in your backstory or in the session, the Kingswood? I mean, either one. Oh, the Kingswood. But I mean, yeah. in my in my backstory, that's where I met Lily. Gotcha. So, in the Kingswood is northeast. Uh, it's really far away. It's on the opposite side oh, of the continent okay. from you. Sorry. Um, but from your backstory, that one was actually close. It's it'd be close-ish, but it'd still be in Valencia. Uh, so it's like closer to South Watch, um, yeah. but it's, I mean, it's next to the, that's it for mountains. me guys. I, that's the closest tree I got. Yeah, the, the closest thing I could think of is near Hesperus's cave. Yeah. Um, I mean, 
yeah, you could probably, you guys could probably teleport right to Hesperus's cave uh, since you have been there, and I'm sure there's a scraggly tree on those, uh, on the mountain somewhere. Uh, yeah, there, the, you could also get to Haven. You guys have seen, uh, let's see, Greg has seen a tree in Haven. Oh, and Nasir, who was there? Yeah, Nasir has seen. So the ancient forest is, yeah, pretty like Haven was, remember that path that went up into the mountains that went toward to Ironmark, which is the, uh, the Dwarven capital. This is uh, probably like south of Ironmark. So you guys could like go to, to Haven and then drop down and go south from there on from the other side of the Rocktooth Mountains. Or uh larissa you said something about your uh character had something special you wanted the party to know about oh yeah um i've been keeping this for emergencies uh but i have a marble of teleportation where i smash it and then just cast the teleportation spell uh i would still have to have an idea of where we're going but i did see from the scrying, I still like know an overhead view of like the general area of where we need to go. Mm -hmm. Would that be enough? That'd be enough to to use the spell. Uh, it does have a table because um, you do yeah. have to like make a check to see like how close you get to it. So yeah, that would get would, you somewhere nearby. Because we had an overhead view, I viewed a lot of trees. Would that be enough, or would I have had to like? be from the scrying um i wouldn't say that you saw a specific tree well enough to jump to that tree okay but from the but it would allow that to be like that you've seen the location um because it also like zoomed out pretty like pretty fast yeah. it didn't give you like the specific location like mm -hmm. it it dove deep so you do have but yeah, so I'd let, I'd give you the bonus from teleportation to get you close, but I wouldn't, uh, you can't use transport, transport via plants to get directly on it. Okay. Um, just looking over one thing real quick. Um, uh, t -t -t you and up to eight willing creatures of your choice that you can see within range. Um, which the range is 10 feet or a single object that you can see within range. Um, okay. So probably won't be able to take the cart. We can take rooster, but we wouldn't be able to take the cart, <laughs> which is probably great if we're traipsing around, around a mountain anyway, to be fair. Oh, uh, Nasir, do you know where Azaziel's at? His, his body is still in um Sarah's when home. you came back weren't you did i ever tell you where azaziel is being kept because in that knowledge that you were oh. oh my bad i thought you had this information the whole time azaziel is in that same place like you don't like, you know, that like, is. as they're talking about, like, hey, this is like the thing that we scried, like, you're like, oh, that's also the same direction that like, I feel Azazel's soul. Um, and you guys can now deduce that Azazel's soul is actually being kept in the same place as Drandall Stag's clones. Um, hmm. Okay, so that's definitely where we're going. Yeah. All right. So I, I want to try, I mean, if we're I'd like us to rest up a little bit because I'm still a little winded from that fight. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, if we want to like make sure that we have enough like rations and water and stuff, like we should. And Laurel's like, oh, we we will send you with provisions. Great. Right. Um, uh, you'll be, and you're you're welcome to rest. Um, but we can. He's like, also, what would you like us to do with your friend Azaziel? Would you like us to care for him here, or would you like to take his body with you?
If we find his soul, hats off. <laughs> Is it gonna be like Scooby Doo live action where his soul just flies back to his body, <laughs> or like once he release it? Yeah, I mean, if or do we need his, his body soul, with us? If you release his soul, it's gonna go back to his body wherever his body's at. All right. <laughs> Is what since it sucked it out from wherever it was, that's mm. yeah, okay. probably what's going to happen. That's fair. Okay. We don't. Mm-hmm. I agree. Oh. Yeah. Okay. We will. Uh, we will take care of him. Uh, all right. Uh, so, did you want to use? your teleportation marvel uh as druids we don't have access to teleport but we do have access to transport via plants um teleport's a more arcane spell so if you would like to use teleport you could get you could use that or we can get you to uh, either one of the to one of the trees in haven uh or uh one of our rangers can take you to the edge of the forest um, cause we have seen those trees and then we could transport them back. And so we could take you to, uh, to the South, uh, like Southern tip of the mountain where it touches the forest. Um, it would still be several miles, t- uh, to, uh, there. Okay. That would, if you, uh, that would probably be your closest option is if one of our rangers went with you. Um, so let us, let us know when you're ready to go. And, uh, w- when would you like us to send you? How much time do you need? At least enough to take a short rest. <laughs> Is it still like morning or like it's about noon? It's midday, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's like afternoon. It's like two or three o'clock in the afternoon. Hey, Riss, so, didn't I mean, we get a long rest from the level up? Yeah, you guys got a long rest from the level up. So you're oh, you we don't always do it that way. So I wasn't. Yeah, aware. you're right. We don't always, but this time I did because you guys have had a long rest beforehand. Okay, um, then. Never mind on that. Ready to go now. <laughs> as, soon okay. as, as soon as we get our permissions. <laughs> All right. Then they bring in packs of uh, like they bring in your stuff, all your backpacks and things off of the uh, and they bring in rooster as well. So he can come I'm like, we'll take care of your cart and uh, and as your friend. And then they cast transport via, via laurel cast transport via plants and you see oh what's up okay laurel's like mid cast <laughs> oh uh let's have greg come with just be, just so that when he gets back um, no matter where we are, well, no matter nice. where you are, he can be there with you. How about Reg staying in the yeah, city? Yeah, Reg, we're just gonna safe? keep the party together. Okay. Um, and we'll just kind of have them hang back and like so they're there, but they're not there. We're gonna, pre- yeah, they're watching the exit, they're following in the back of the party, that kind of thing. Um, so they'll be there, but not be there. <laughs> they're sitting out because they smoked a little too much and they're like, yeah. <laughs> we can't participate. <laughs> I've seen some shit. <laughs> I'm seeing shit now. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, all right, cool. Yep. So Laurel finishes her cast. Uh, you see a, a kind of a shimmer, a green shimmer on the on the edge of the wall. And one of the rangers says, follow me. And they walk through. Um, and so you all walk I through follow. as well. Mm-hmm. Um walking through this little shimmering portal and you jump out of a tree on the edge of the Volokan wood, looking up at the stone tooth mount, the, the rock tooth mountains uh, that you, we, you guys have heard so much about um, since the very beginning of this campaign and will now be finally adventuring to and exploring. Hey. So uh, with that, uh, you found, you find the, the ranger bids you adieu. Uh, and jumps back through the tree and just <laughs> disappears uh, back to our Beth Noel. Um, you guys have, uh, yeah, you see the rocky range ahead of you. 
and you begin trekking towards the direction that you know. Um, after it's going to, I mean, you trek for several hours. Uh, is there anything you guys want to do before I, we get you kind of to the, to the location? Is there anything you want to do now? Um, I no mean, worries if not, just checking in. It's still too early to like set up camp right here. Yeah. Um, so I say we just head up. Okay. See, see how far we can get. I don't know if we can get there in a few hours, but yeah, it's it's gonna be probably several days, several several days hike to get to the location that you know. I mean, you will be mountaineering through the wilderness. Um, you guys have rope, you have pythons, uh, you have uh, those things uh, in your packs. Um, each of you are given like the in the provisions that the elves gave you. Um, in addition to kind of whatever gear you already had, they gave you uh, Dungeoneers packs. Um, and so you all have pythons. You all have uh, the, uh, an additional thing of 50-foot uh, rope. Um, and you also have 10 days worth of provisions um, in elven bread. Not Limbus bread, because this is not Lord of the Rings, but it is elven <laughs> bread. Um, our Volathulian bread. <laughs> Uh, all right. I, for the first day, uh, let us check the weather. Okay. Uh, it's a, it's a pretty normal day. Uh, you guys have a, uh, it's, it's sunny out. There's some slight cloud cover, nothing big. Uh, and you guys are able to march through the, uh, you're able to make pretty good, pr uh, progress when you get towards the evening, um, you guys uh, start looking for a place to camp. You see that there is a cave that you can camp in. Uh, there is a like a kind of a plateau, a high plateau over uh, that kind of overlooks the path that you've been marching on. It's like a ravine that you've, you're walking on to get on the top. And then, uh, or you can also kind of just camp down in the path itself. Uh, what, where would you like to choose for uh, for your campsite. I vote the plateau. Okay. How do you guys set up camp? Away with, from the edge. With... Okay. <laughs> it's like with teamwork. <laughs> uh... <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll set up, set up watch. Like not at all, not even trancing. Wait, you don't? I am trying to remember, I thought, I keep confusing which which option you took. I thought you took the resurrection one. Oh yeah, 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 reborn. But I mean, reborn still. That was oh okay okay. I have a reborn in another campaign that we're no 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 hold on I'm I'm confused like because when we because you had two options you could come back truly resurrected and then you would not and then you, uh, you would uh, you would no longer be reborn as an oak strider or you could come back as an iron oak, uh, which would basically put you in like an, a suit like you'd be playing Full Metal Alchemist at that point but in a and then. Uh, an iron oak kind of like suit of armor that would be enlivened and then you would have the reborn statistics that way so you're either you're either resurrected or you're reborn you're not both yeah sorry so did you choose resurrection or did you choose choose reborn because the reborn one allows you to continue to be um allows you to stay in the cycle of rebirth and re Oh, 
Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're Nasir. You just will no longer, like if you die now, like you're, you will not come back as an Oak Strider. You will not be reborn into future incarnations. This is the last incarnation of Nasir. Sorry. I know that was a cool role play moment. I was like, hold on, this isn't lining up. <laughs> um, so feel free to sleep. I mean, you're, you're free to take first watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is Nolan still silent? Hey, did you turn yourself on again after? Yeah. Or is it capturing to the other scene with the battle map? Uh, okay, guys, all right. So, can you guys hear Nolan now? They missed a bit there. That might is it just lag from Twitch? The last Nasir. What did you guys miss? Now nah, he's mute. Okay. Can you? Can everyone hear me? And me? Okay. Sarah can hear us. Have him sing until we hear him. I like that idea, says Masamune. He's crooning. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. I loved it. Good I job, Masamune. <laughs> yeah, three out of four are audible. Okay. We're, the, we're hmm. in the 30s right now. <laughs> Where is, I mean, so Nolan's got to be. I mean, Wait, I met Riss. Wait, what? Wait. What do you mean? Okay, Wolfchild hears everyone but Nolan. Riss oh. is not Nolan. <laughs> no, he was talking about. No, 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 uh, earlier. Yeah, earlier. Oh, okay. He said something about can Ross. He said, can Ross carry two packs? Oh, uh, and he I meant see. Riss. Because um, you, you small. Um, I'm tiny. I I'm I don't have the pack necessarily. It's like I have the contents check, of check, a pack. Check, 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 check. Check, check. I mean, that's which kind of I a lot of Can you guys oh, yeah. hear me now? Check, check. Check, 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 check. Can you guys hear Nolan? He's no. Oh, there we go. There yeah. we go. Ha -ha! Said, there we go. So, okay. You guys heard me earlier though, right? It was the last thing you heard. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, there. Wolf Child and Gabriel can both hear you. Uh, what was the last thing you guys heard? Nolan, like, where are we at in the conversation with Nolan? The beginning of the episode. The yeah, beginning, yeah. yeah. Huh. <laughs> uh, I guess, have you guys not heard him since we came back from break? I don't know why that would happen. Yeah. I don't, wait. I don't hear him sing. oh, he singing. I was singing. Sorry. Though. <laughs> he was crooning. I would describe it as crooning. Uh, you mm. teleported, started setting up camp. Okay. Oh, that's All right, so you didn't miss much. It just cut out randomly. Okay. That's so weird. It is weird. Okay. So uh, for those who for those who missed it, we were talking about because uh, I had provided N uh, Nolan a couple of different options when bringing back Nasir, and so we had gotten confused on which option he had taken. So we were clarifying that. Um, and that's so if you only heard my side of the conversation sorry but he so he was about to say i don't sleep anymore and i was like yes you do so he does so he is truly resurrected he is nasir um he will no longer be reborn and this is his last incarnation um but he so he's just he's just a real boy a real level 13 adventurer with a lot with superpowers um and one life to live one love to give yolo <laughs> so. all right then uh you guys make camp you set up a fire uh, on this high little plateau um and you could you guys do recognize that uh kind of from the plateau the firelight can be seen by 
anybody um because you're kind of high up on this plateau like and everybody in the area can see there's a fire up on that plateau um, um and so oh, no. uh, hey if greg's here can he to greg's t- tiny hut around the fire oh yeah yeah he can tell like greg's tiny hut around it so you know like, hey man a little and, mushroom uh, man a little mushroom man <laughs> Uh, you guys want to try my mushrooms? And then none of us have to take watch, necessarily. This is my third life, Gabriel. <laughs> That's right. Man, okay, yeah, I forgot about the tiny hut. Cool. Camping is easy. Moving on. Um... <laughs> 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 All right. Sweet. Uh, so he's uh, there's that uh, at night. Uh, who would like to uh, just we'll make one check, one roll for the whole night to see uh, if something happens. Uh, who wants to make that roll? I'll do it. Okay. Please roll Oh. a d20. I rolled a four. A four. Okay. Uh, I guess something did see your light uh, because you do hear uh, a, like a, it's a, like a chirping noise and a growl at the same time. Like an owl bear? Kind of. It's Rooster's no. long lost Rooster? family. Uh, it's like a screeching. Oh, yeah. You guys can see through the walls, right? Yeah. All right. But cool. it can't so, see us. But it can't see you. So it's like <laughs> pecking around, looking for uh, looking for like the light and the stuff, looking for food. Um, and you see a cockatrice, which you would recognize to be a cockatrice. Uh, it's this giant winged chicken. But literally, like, I mean, it's, it's a, I guess it's a small monstrosity. So it's like the size of Zilla, um, and it's running around, uh, just kind of pecking around, like, and it smells like food. Um, I didn't think it, that cockatrices were that small. <laughs> this is a small monstrosity on a line. Oh, wow. Okay. I always envision them to be, like, bigger. <laughs> like, <laughs> like raptor can't, size. It can't get in, so if you guys just want to wait out the night, uh, you can. If you wanted to fight it, you could. What do you guys want to do? Uh, I'm just... I'm just... That's what, like 100 XP? <laughs> yeah, it's like probably not worth it. No, nah, we're good. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to see right, if it goes cool. away. And yeah, it eventually like can't find a way into the hidden bubble of magic and <laughs> like and just sit, sits down and make it falls asleep next to you uh, next to the little magic bubble and then wanders <laughs> off in the morning. Uh, with that, uh, cool. You guys get up and uh, wake up in the morning, and you continue on your path. You've got a whole day of travel ahead. I'm just gonna kind of skip ahead uh, the kind of um, this travel section. I am just really quickly. I'm actually going to cast. So last night I cast Find Greater Steed, and have you cool <gasps> turn into a Griven. <laughs> oh yeah, that makes this way yeah. way faster. Okay, so uh, yeah, is this like is you cool the griffin or does you cool just like grow griffin wings on his back? Like, what does that look like? I think you cool just turns into a griffin, but it has giant uh, elk antlers. Yes, I love it. I love this. Yay! Griffin. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm. The, can the whole party fit on there? Probably not. No. But um, so you can fly. Well, you can actually, kind of scout ahead. Zilla's pretty tiny. Okay. It's Greg it's and Reggie we got to worry about. Greg so can both. transform into a Quetzalcoatlus. <gasps> yes, he <laughs> Carry can. Carry Rooster while Reggie is flying on back. So we're we're just. <laughs> I like this. Yes, absolutely. It's the. Yeah, the morning, and you guys turn into the only way to fly, <laughs> and totally are flying over uh, the mountains. All right, as, as, you, as you guys are flying, you see lots of really cool. Like, I mean, you're flying over the mountain range, and you can see you see a lot of different things happening. Um, you see, you actually see a bunch of giants, like a, you see a, a settlement of giants uh, waking up, uh, and some people go, you know, some of them like marching off to go 
hunt for the day. Uh, you see a <gasps> number of uh, wait a minute. Like, Hold, I have, I have folk. a sorry. I have a huge question. So mm-hmm. earlier in the campaign, Nasir and Greg received blessings from um, what's his face, uh, Scrupulous. That if we never hurt, like hurt a giant, we'd have a bonus to our wisdom. Mm-hmm. Does that still go off for me? Do I still get that plus two? Now you died. I died. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make yeah, sure. I remember uh, Greg still has it. <laughs> yeah, Greg still has it. Um, but you died, so you lost that. Sorry. This, this is the first giants we've seen all campaign. I know, right? <laughs> You're like, oh, what if we piss off giants? <laughs> Look at him down. There. Take pictures. <laughs> Uh, all right, you get there. Uh, you get, uh, you, you see a bunch of other places, but then you do see kind of this, like from from above. It's a, it's a formation of rocks that doesn't necessarily look natural. Um, it looks like magic had blasted out uh, this like side of the mountain, and then also had like regrown it. Um, and when you're looking down at it, uh, at this, at this kind of cave entrance, um, it looks like a hand, uh, black, like that is kind of carved into the side of the mountain, but you can only see it when you're, when you're looking at it from the sky. Got it. Um, and so in the middle, in the middle of the hand, um, is where you see the, like, the entrance at where the, like these this, the rocks kind of rise up into uh, this kind of hidden entrance. It's not really hidden, but it's, <laughs> for, it's a, for a secret organization, a, this is pretty yeah. blatantly obvious. Like, yeah, pretty blatantly. Uh, obvious. There's like, a, there's a magic cave here. As long like as from no the one... from the sky, we see we see this, but then like it from the side, it's just like. There's like a cave mouth here. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> kind of a situation. Yeah. If you're flying overhead, you would only it would and it's yeah, it looks like it's been like blasted like char marks, right? Um, like it's been carved into the mountain that way. Dang. Okay. I think that's so, it. <laughs> uh how do you guys want to approach it? Uh there's I mean you could land right next to the entrance if you want and just walk in. Um you could land somewhere else and try to sneak in. Are uh, um, it, is there anyone outside the entrance that we can see? You don't see anybody outside the entrance. Okay. Um, we can land a little bit in the woods and like try to maybe I don't know land behind the entrance. <laughs> um, I'm down. So, for I mean, there, there aren't a lot of yeah. There, this area is not heavily wooded. Oh, um, okay, okay, a, okay. This is pretty craggy, rocky. Terrain. It's pretty on the mountain. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Let's let's go into a dive. Get right, like f- find the you know a nice hilly area to kind of land behind, um, mm-hmm. and then <sighs> I think we. Uh, yeah, we'll sneak up. Is that, is that the plan? Yeah, I can sneak in. Can... Rooster's gonna have to stay here. I can sneak up and do a little bit of intel. Okay. You guys land, um, roll a, I guess, you, I mean, you guys fly well. So you guys land uh, pretty stealthily in like the, in the, the woods kind of a way. Um, and, and you start sneaking up close by. Uh, what is everybody's passive perception? Passive perception is 20. <laughs> uh, oh 22. God. 15. 15. Okay. Everybody who rolled above a 20. Um, Rolled, <laughs> rolled. You say. <laughs> I mean, if you'd like to, uh, well, you wouldn't have known to roll. So yeah, it's passive. So on this one, you feel like you don't notice anything, like movement-wise, but you feel like you're being watched. It's a I weird. It's a weird. Like, it's only because you're so perceptive that you're able to like really pick up this feeling. I feel like as a thief, like I absolutely know that feeling, and I'm like, we we might be being watched. I I feel it. I, mean, I feel it in my gloves. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's a might. I think it's we are. Yeah, I I have this little icon saying we have nine viewers. 
<laughs> you. <laughs> Way to get meta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Guys, to. I found them. <laughs> <laughs> there they are. We're being watched. Uh. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> Way to bring the audience really into the game. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everybody, roll for initiative. <laughs> like, yeah. Nine humanoids jump out of the darkness and attack you. Uh, we told you to come here. <laughs> one, of the, one of them wielding a, a legendary sword called a Masamune. They all look like Randall Stack. <laughs> <laughs> you have a Tabaxi rogue named Arrowcat. <laughs> uh, a werewolf wow. bloodseeker, wolf, uh, wolf child, and then the, a fellow paladin, Gabriel of Zeos. <laughs> <laughs> yes! The squad! <laughs> like, we've come for your loot and glory. And... Oh, God. <laughs> they murder us, they take over <laughs> the stream. <laughs> yep. That's, uh, that's what happens. That's the rules. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> uh, Chad, thank you for being here. Erica, um, you're a tabaxi, but you were raised by Aarakocra, which is why it's a <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense because Arrow Cat. Mm hmm He's like a half tabaxi, half Aarakocra, right? Like, don't ask me how that works. But yeah, he's did. just a walking griffin, dude. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Awesome werewolf <laughs> for the win. <laughs> uh, you guys are great. Thanks for being here. Um, um, yeah, you, you have this weird feeling that you're being watched, but you can't pick up from any kind of direction. You don't hear, God, like, God. people or, uh, like, rustlings of, of anything, like, from a, any specific direction. Um, but uh, you guys are free to continue sneaking towards the um, towards the entrance if you would like. So please roll stealth checks. Okay. Oh, I never used my um, my pep talk, so I'm going to use it now. Oh, okay. On the stealth. Check. Okay. Wow, uh, twenty-one. Twenty-one. All right. With That's disadvantage, I got a fifteen. <laughs> Wolf Child, thank you for subscribing. Yes, thank you. Oh my gosh. Wolf Bloodseeker, he's here. <laughs> uh, 22, thankfully, due to my expertise and not expertise, the the other feature thing. Cool. And then, Nolan, what'd you get? A 15. 15? Okay. Was it? Reliable talent. That's All right. Uh, the two sneaky people with. Uh, who, I mean, books of your practice in being in the in the wild and then out in the wilderness. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you. And I can Larissa, you're very risk. You're just very sneaky in general. Uh, we're just going to assume Greg and Reggie. Neither, you know, they're they're just they're just there. So <laughs> we're just not really going to worry about them for the rest of the session. They're there, but they're, they're chilling with Rooster. Yeah, they're just uh, so. You guys, uh, you guys are able to sneak uh, pretty successfully, uh, even though you like you guys both also had the feeling that you're being watched. So you're actually like you're not phoning it in. You're like really going for it. And this year, you're this is not your specialty. You're doing as best you can. You did pretty well. Um, I'm holding on my armor together, so it doesn't yeah, make holding sound. on your, like like you're being as quiet as you possibly can. But you're doing a really good job. Um, <laughs> quieter than most people with your. So armor. you don't ching ching. <laughs> um, no, it's a really, really good stealth check. Uh, you do that, and you're able to kind of come through the, through the pass over the hills and get to the that entrance. Uh, you bef like right before you get there, you do notice uh, a there's a small like you you can you notice a couple of tracks that actually lead off uh, to in a different direction. Um, would I recognize these tracks or can I make a check? Yeah, you can make a check. Please make a survival track. Check. Well, you do know that they are like right right now. What you can tell with that before check is just that they're kind of like scuff marks that something has walked in that direction, probably humanoid. And that's a 19. A 19. OK, you can tell that this person uh, you're able to detect uh, these tracks because um, you're very proficient at this, but also because they seem to take this path often. 
but even though they take it often this person is very light of foot they don't they don't normally leave tracks behind but because they have walked this particular path uh, multiple times you're able to pick it up Um, it does so like it, it, you guys are kind of you know if you kind of go around this bend you're going to be kind of on the plateau where the where the cave entrance is um this seems to take you a little bit further up the hill and then kind of around if you were to follow this path which way do you want to go if this is sneaky sneaky randall i say we pop we follow his sneaky sneaky footprints but if he's sneaky, sneaky enough to have that be obvious. Maybe he wants us to follow those tracks. So I'm not saying we split the party, but we're already kind of split. Because Reggie and not Reggie. Yeah, Reggie and Greg and Brewster are already like away from us. He could go to the different paths if we want to. <laughs> no, I mean, no, we're not going to use them or their, yeah, they're, they're back guarding. Yeah. We don't have the, the benefit there for of them, but we, we also don't have the, uh, I'm not going to put them in danger. Mm. Let's see. I vote for not following the tracks. Mm. Given that it looks like these tracks were left intentionally. Yeah, it's just to the cave it is. Okay. Uh, you walk into the, uh, I guess you guys approach, go around the bend, see the, uh, see the plateau with the cave entrance, and uh, do you just do you want to enter? Yeah, I guess you do. You enter the cave. I'll look and see if there are any like traps to see if it's gonna like collapse on us as soon as we walk in. Okay. Um, you the feeling of being watched grows more intense. Okay. Um, and to the point that you don't feel like like you you know that somebody knows you're here. Yeah. Um, but you don't notice any traps. Okay. on the outside of the cave. Okay. Well, I hate this. Um, <laughs> I hate the, the feeling of being watched like I know I'm being watched. Um, can I look around again and see if I see anybody? Yeah. Um, at 25. 25? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you know that if there was anybody there to see you would have seen them we might be dealing with an invisible person <laughs> cello does love his layer actions um i'm gonna Is pop any- off divine sense Ooh, what does divine sense reveal to you so I can detect good and evil. Until your next turn, you can sense anything affected by the hollow spell or know the location of any f- celestial fiend or undead within 60 feet. I just... I can use it, it six blocked times. By, uh, blocked by total cover. Total cover? Okay. Uh, you do not detect any celestial fiend undead within 60 feet. Um, cool. The, I guess, it says you know the presence of good and evil. Um, b- 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 yeah, that was like the you first can thing detect you good yeah. and evil. You can detect good and evil. Uh, you do feel, and I mean, you, this is not news to you because you know what you're dealing with, but yeah. you feel a, the creepy sensation of evil nearby, and it feels musty and ancient. Got it. Okay. All right. The the cave entrance looms before you. Um, these rocks that have grown together and kind of a, into a, like an, an A-frame kind of formation, a, a very angled formation. Uh, and what do you do? Um, 
I'm going to follow the rogue. I feel like you're light of foot. You're going to be able to see the traps. Okay. Yeah. I lead the way and I check for traps along the way. Okay. How far back do you follow? Mm. Blix, where do you want to be in the marching order? Mm. I think I should be at the back. Okay. I'm going to be just within, like, not a full 10 feet away. I'm going to be, like, 9 feet away from her. Uh, but, okay. like, keep my distance a little bit. Okay. All right, so not a full 10 feet, so you want to keep her within glaive range? Uh, and within my aura range. Okay, so you're keeping her within 10 feet. Yeah. Perfect. Um, all right, sounds good. And Blixen, but enough room for the woman to do some work. <laughs> right. yeah. She could spin all the way around and not hit you, um, you. with her dagger. Go full right. Beyblade. Okay. Uh, in this marching order, you guys walk, uh, Riss, you leading the way, um, and into the darkness of the cave. Um, as you enter, your eyes begin to adjust. Does anybody have dark vision? I do. Okay. No. 60 feet. Uh, those of you, uh, those who, so with with your dark vision, you see in grayscale, um, looking around. Uh, this looks like a, it's like a kind of normal cave, except for the obviously the, it's not naturally formed, but it goes back and then it ends in a wall, but on that wall is the symbol of a, the black hand. And do I see this? Uh, as your eyes adjust. And you're and you walk forward. So the the wall is like is fifty feet away. Um, you can, uh, yeah. I mean, you'll you can make out that there is a wall there, and you can see you can see something is on it, uh, but you can't make it. And you'd have to get closer to know what that it was a hand. Okay. Um. I. Uh get closer <laughs> okay um i, I want to see if there's any sort of mechanism that might open up a secret passageway okay uh, uh, to... please make an investigation check okay oof it's a seven <laughs> Seven. Okay. I'm not proficient, uh, so it is just a seven. <laughs> okay. As you're like you can see it's a hand, right? Uh like just it's the I mean it's the symbol of the black hand. You guys know this is the, the black hand, but it is an it's an open handed uh palm. And it looks like the Dark Brotherhood from Skyrim, right? Like um the and so as you're as you're feeling around, you don't really notice anything. Is it like hand size or is it like a big hand? That's on it the is hand sized. Sorry, I did not specify that. Can I? Can I try just putting my hand on it? Yeah. Yeah, you put your hand on it, and you hear in your mind a voice ask you a question, and it says, "Whom do you seek?" Nixilis? <laughs> well, I was think I was think Randall Stagg wouldn't say his own name, so that's why I that's why I said that. You say that, and the hand glows with a purple light, and then opens up, and the wall itself, like as it's glowing purple, the wall starts to get, get absorbed into the hand starting from the very edges like it like crumbles in block by block did as you... if falling into a singularity and did i make another hand... portal, the... another and portal? Then, <laughs> again and then the hand like closes into a fist and disappears into a flash of light revealing a corridor uh that descends into a staircase made of stone down into the earth uh it goes 
at least 100 feet down. Because at 60 feet, his dark vision can't see any further. Okay. I hope I said the right name. Um, are we trying to be sneaky? I believe so, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, never mind. I can, I have daylight. I have, I can cast light in a red hue with a little object that I have. Because I know you and I don't have dark vision. Okay. I, I mean. But I'm fine it, following. Demon Portal 2, Eldritch Boogaloo. Mm-hmm. Honestly. <laughs> um, all right. D- you have dark vision, you lead the way. <laughs> if there's no if there's no light when we get down there, then you're literally the rogue. <laughs> like yeah. um, Okay, so we can't see it. I can't see down that abyss. I do we do, you, do you have any... stairwell? Yeah, like you know that Yeah. I mean, no. I mean, you, there's the light coming in from the cave, and then mm-hmm. a dark tunnel. You know, you know there are stairs there, um, and you can see probably like, you know, four or five before it disappears in the darkness. And then Nasir can see sixty feet down. There are more stairs before it disappears okay. in the darkness for him. Do we want to proceed? I guess is the question. I mean, yeah, that's what we're here for. Okay. Would you guys be mad if I casted the light spell right now? As long as we stay far apart. I mean... I mean I'll mean, i be the brave one to go first. Uh, but like... <laughs> so you want to cast light? Like you're thinking about casting light and going first? Sorry, I'll stay. Yeah. You, yeah, guys, are, you it, guys are talking. We're all good. Yeah, we can just cast light and go. Yeah. So I, I use Randolph's nose... That I got from a spinoff episode <laughs> that I still have. <laughs> Woke up from a dream and I still have it. Okay. Uh, Randolph knows, and I once a day <laughs> I can cast right. Uh, I can cast the light spell in a red hue. Did okay. you approve that? <laughs> like Jello? he did. I, he did. Okay, good. It's in my inventory. So you now realize that the item is cursed, because <laughs> um, the actual name of it is Randall knows. So every time you use it, Randall Stag knows your location. Are you fucking serious? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh... <laughs> no, you use Randolph's nose. Would have been um... so pissy. <laughs> like, you did not. <laughs> you forgot that I had that. I totally did. We're gonna do all uh... these Randall Stag cry cry wolf kind of like moments. It's like, yeah, no, I pull off my mask and stab you because I'm Randall Stag. That oh was, when he shows up, we're gonna be like, "It's not you." Because it was like up. a, it was like a spinoff of like, it was like a Christmas spinoff. It's like whatever, whenever it happens, it's not gonna be a surprise. Like, <laughs> so chat knows there was a Christmas spinoff episode where like <laughs> Zilla had a fever dream, you and fight, you fought the Grunch. I did. I fought the Grunch, and I saved um, Louisville, <laughs> and I woke up with Randall with Randall's nose, which. Show shines so bright. Um, <laughs> today I can cast light in a red hue, and I woke up with it from the dreams. I was like, Oh, maybe it was real. <laughs> you, you fought a giant green, like a green giant, and then there's a bunch of uh, reindeer knolls. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 reindeer knolls. <laughs> uh, how times have changed. Um, so, as, oh, as, she, as she cast that, um, can I also bonus action cast nature's veil and take the hide action? Yes, you may. So I can <laughs> and take the hot action. Yeah. Thank you for specifying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right, I'll go right. first. With okay. a substantial lead. You on... go first. Uh, you hear the okay. soft footsteps of someone invisible creeping behind you. Um, and Nasir, who is uh, bringing up the lead, you've got the red hue of the light, which, which is one thing that's great about red light is it doesn't destroy your night vision. Um, so that is nice. another benefit so of, I did good. <laughs> so this, as opposed to like using a torch, 
Um, it anybody like your dark vision will work. So normally when you have dark vision, if there's a light source, uh, your dark vision turns off. Um, but because this is a red light, it won't do that. Your dark vision will continue to work through it. Yay. Um, so yeah, you guys, uh, so you guys, you begin descending down these steps, uh, and around 50 feet, uh, you notice, uh, that one of them, like you realize that there is like a pressure plate underneath mm. the steps. Um, you've already, like, you, you realize that as you step on it, um, but then, like, it, it makes that click noise. Hmm. Okay. Um, I, I step on it. Yeah, right? as you step on it. Okay. I, I'm sorry, yeah. but you probably did. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, no, no. Zilla, how much do you weigh? It's a great question. One sec. <laughs> Just well, I'm ca I'm <laughs> carrying like 150 pounds right now. Oh god. Well, actually, I'm carrying. It would be less because a lot of that is in the bag of holding. So uh, hang on. I was like, because she's an ant, she can carry four times her body weight. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like my daughter is almost three uh, three uh, feet, and okay, she's only Zilla like. Zilla <laughs> with no gear. Zilla with no gear weighs 40 pounds. Checks out. <laughs> Check, yeah. Checks out. Um, um, can can you like uh, can we? I'm probably I probably weigh like seventy something. Can we Do, put doing something the on take. the plate so that way you can step off of it and it won't? It's just Indiana Jones. It. Yeah. Okay. What do I have that's heavy? I don't have <laughs> just dump your back out. Ah. <laughs> Um, I mean, I have 40 pounds worth of rations. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's a feast. <laughs> so much. 40, oh, yeah. of all loose alien get... bread. <laughs> so where did you get all that? Is that from like the dragon and the stuff? Like, yeah. Wow. He's... <laughs> That's... I guess I don't make, I give you guys lots of rations and then I don't make you eat them. <laughs> yeah. I've had these 20 rations I think since well, they might have well, gone bad by now well, did, you eat one this, did you guys eat one this morning when you woke up in camp probably yeah well Greg usually always now. gives us good berries <laughs> oh yeah yeah it's true and we're also Zillant. on a 30 day fast so <laughs> we're on a 30 day fast um, alright so I want to look around and see as far as I can see ahead of me. Mm -hmm. are, is there like, are there other, now that I know what a pressure plate looks like, can I see if there's another one ahead? Ooh, great question. Uh, make a perception check. Okay. I'm great. I'm good at perception. Um, that's going to be a 23. 23. You see that each step in front of you has one of these, like, and, it, and, and it's not even like a plate on the step. It's, it's like, like the step. It's, it's the step itself is a pressure plate. <gasps> um, and what it looks like is that they all have them, but this one was kind of loose, which is why it, like, the others are firmly set, uh, like, set. But you also notice that when you look back, that all of the ones behind you also have. Uh, like the are also seem to have been pressure plates. So you've already. But this is the on. only. This is the only one that's actually like activated. This is the one. So this is this one seems to be loose, whereas the other ones are tightly in place. Hmm. As if the wear and tear of this one had caused it to be a little looser than the others. Here. But I heard a click with this one. You heard a click. I'm just gonna pick you up. But it, now, but it kind of feels like it was clicking back into place. Mm. Um, and we're only we're like halfway down the thing, so. Yep. Uh, your light, from where your light goes, uh, it's like what forty feet, ten feet of bright light. Yeah, it might be. Or like. It might be 20 feet. Let me look. Yeah, it's like 20 feet of bright light, 20 feet of dim light. 
think it so. I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, or we're gonna call it forty because I think that's what a torch is. Nasir, mm-hmm. your dark vision seeing through, you can see the bottom of the stairs. You know, you can see you are at the halfway point. All right. I see the bottom, but <sighs> hmm. I think we risk like Blixa and I should head further down a little bit and Zilly should just risk it. Like I'll keep you close. Um so my protective You guys ward go can and I'll you. just then book it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and I'll stay close so my protective ward can help you. Um But we're just gonna try to walk around Zilla. Just don't step on this this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys creep over her. You get ten feet away. Um, Blixa, you're invisible and behind Nolan. Um, Riss, what do you do? All right. My signal. Run like hell down these stairs. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> okay. uh, you run. I need everybody to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, sorry, no, an acrobatics check. Acrobatics. Like an acrobatics check as you're running down the stairs, and I, mean, I need to make sure you don't trip and fall. It's an acrobatics check of 10. DC 10. Oh, 18. Dirty 20. <laughs> 24. Okay. You all do fine. Uh, as your foot steps off of that pressure plate, nothing happens. As uh, you guys all, and you all start running down the stairs and you reach the bottom safely. Um, and everybody kind of like running, kind of running into each other. I mean, you're all really deaf and like, you look down, cool. Nothing happened. All right. Sure. Um, Interesting. I go back up and step on the, the plate. <laughs> Okay, you step on the plate. Uh, it's mm-hmm. you can feel it's it's, it's a loose stair. Just a- <laughs> when I now I have a question. When I stepped on it, mm-hmm. and the way that it clicked into place, mm-hmm. noticing that all of them are pressure plates. Mm-hmm. Would it be plausible to believe that? trying to go back up is going to be hard because they're all going to just shift into like a slide situation. Great question. It looks like this trap has not actually been activated. If it were activated, it could make leaving very difficult. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Okay. I will... Because you were perceptive enough, you noticed it when on the way down and stepped mm-hmm. on it, but that one, it's just because that one was loose. And so uh, that, you, so you felt there was actually a mechanism in these stairs that weren't that most people wouldn't recognize because these are s- stairs made of stone. Like mm-hmm. you wouldn't like you would expect them to be solid and does not have pressure plates underneath them, but they do. Okay. Okay. So now that we're at the bottom, yep. I now, assume this year comes back to us. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're at the bottom. You look into the. You see uh, a foyer. Um, as you walk into the room, uh, torches light up, um, and they and then they glow a purple fire. Um, and there is like a there's a center like table, like a coffee table in the middle, a circular. Um, it has the hand print of the dark hand on there, or the black hand, and then it also has uh, like several like couches on the wall like to like it, it, you're literally in like a waiting room and then as you look up you see there is a hooded figure uh standing before you you cannot see their face um but you hear uh you hear their voice say welcome what is your business with the black hand Uh, I look at Nasir because our other friend is invisible. (laughs) Um, 
<laughs> well, we've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, take just, away all your just, inspiration. Just where it came from. You lose just, all of your inspiration. I'm not even kidding. No. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> get one inspiration because that was funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, uh, I don't know what to say here. I know I opened the, I, the hat, hats off. I don't know what to say here. Help um, me. <laughs> I mean, we go on. We going ham or we? Are we saying we seek an audience with Randall Stagg or like what? How do we? The hats are still off. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, if your hat is off, if you're gonna have this conversation, uh, all right, you can't. Yeah, you can't. You can't have off a, a in character conversation. Yeah. If you want to know, yeah, if you want to know what they're what they're thinking, that would have to happen. And <sighs> I think right. we're in the right place. We go ham. Right, go go for it. Yeah. Just... <laughs> <laughs> and charge this dude <laughs> oh you charge the guy yeah. okay all right okay uh, <laughs> um b- 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 you can stand and watch <laughs> in horror <laughs> all right uh yeah roll initiative <laughs> let's go i don't know that's what you meant by going ham i was like i don't know what that means oh <laughs> That's a 25 um, on the on the nose. Okay, 25 on the nose. It's an eight. That's a healthy eight. A healthy me. eight. I got a nice 15. All right, so we're right, going to go. Ah, I'm going to reset my stuff here. All right, uh, but yeah, Blixa, you're going first. What do you do? This year, just charging. Charge! I am yeah. going to take advantage of being invisible and get advantage on my longbow attack. Yes. Uh, yeah. As long as as long as that invisibility doesn't end when you're when you make an attack. It does not. Okay. I guess. Yeah. But you would uh, it would end at my at the end of my turn. It would end at the end of my turn. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. You have advantage on that attack. Oh. And that is... I can't math. I guess when in doubt, Leroy Jenkins, right? Right, that's pretty a much what our plan. master plan is. Uh, uh, how much to hit? hit? 23, 23 to hit? Okay, that hits. Okay. That is... Twenty-three damage. Okay. And then I'm going to do my second attack. Uh, would I also do that with advantage? He dies. Oh. Your your arrow pierces right through, uh, hits him right in the face, in the hood, and uh, he falls over dead. The hood falls off, and you see a bald man. Uh, wearing wearing these black robes and uh yeah you don't recognize this man i turn around and said i was just gonna give him a hug <laughs> <laughs> no i'm kidding <laughs> perception is reality you got it you gotta uh-huh. clarify that <laughs> no i'm kidding we um the black hand is up to no good all right all right uh Beyond this man, <laughs> this is the wrong black hand. This is like uh, yeah. the, the, it's, it's black hand um, towing company or whatever. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah. uh, behind yeah. him, you don't like this is an enclosed room, 
So uh, behind him, you see that there is like, so you're in the foyer and then it looks like there's a stone door there. Um, but you can't like, as you, as you try to open the doors, you can't because there are no, there are no handles. Maybe. And now that, uh, once you guys kind of killed him, you do notice all the stairs, uh, close on you like they they yeah they drop down so it is just a ramp um mm. and you feel the door up above <sighs> lock back into place not a feeling that was gonna happen well well uh thank god for that marble zilla oh yeah but, uh, so there's nothing, there's no doors in here. Uh, there, there's a door. You Anyone a, wants to put a, uh, there's a, a hand there's on a that black door hand in front of you. <laughs> coffee table. <laughs> yeah, so there's a stone door in the back of the room in the middle, like right in front of the guy that came out or like that was talking to you in the hood and looked like looks like he came through the door but, and it's closed behind him. Um, and then looks like he was probably the gatekeeper, the person that would open the door for you if you had proper business. Um, we and... did not. <laughs> um, there's a black hand on the coffee table. If anybody wants to try to open that one, I already did the thing up there. Not doing that again. <laughs> I'll put my hand on it. Uh, this one, you put your hand on it. It's just decorative. All right, I pick up the dude's body and put his hand there. Ah, doesn't do anything. Okay. Hmm. hmm. Is it, I, can I see any, like, a candelabra that looks like it's out of place or like, <laughs> like some sort of trigger that might, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, you, you guys, you comb the entire room. You don't notice any physical or mechanical triggers in the room. You, you, there's a kind of like a bowl of fruit on the, uh, on the, uh, on the center coffee table. Nothing, nothing in the bowl. Uh, the, the torches are magical. Um, that they're giving off the, the purple light, but they're not, uh, other than that, you don't see anything. What you do notice are in the very top uh, of, the, of the room, as you're searching, there are uh, like very small holes and they line the entire, uh, the entire room. And it's, it's only in like the, in the cracks of the room. Hmm. So where the ceiling meets the wall and where the where the walls form. Well, I don't like that. If only was Greg. If only Greg was here, man, and he could transform into a tiny ant. <laughs> <laughs> See where those lead. Um, um, and we can't. We we've tried, but we can't pry open the door. Uh, I mean, so you see the door, you can try to pry it open. I have a crowbar. I'm gonna try crowbar? to. I'm gonna try to pry it open. Okay. Do it. I will assist right. you. Please assist me because I'm not strong. As I am this. strong. You want me to try it? <laughs> you try it. I yeah. hand you my crowbar. It's a single. It's a door of a single stone slab. I technically have two. It looks no, like it four. probably drops into the ground. Um, I have four crowbars. If we all want to take a crowbar and like try together, I, okay. I'm I'm a little bit strong. All I'm right, you guys not. all. But. All right, yeah, do it. All right, so everybody roll together, or everybody roll with advantage, and let me know what your totals are. Now, is this strength or is this athletics? Uh, this is going to be, this is actually just going to be flat strength. Okay. So just whatever, like if it's a plus one, plus two. Yeah, yeah. So you get the you get the one from you don't get no skills apply to this. Um, In eighteen. Fifteen. I also got an eighteen. Okay. With a minus one, I got a fifteen. Eighteen. Eighteen. And what did you get, Larissa? Fifteen. Fifteen. Surprisingly. Right. Uh, as you, you guys are prying this door open, you realize it does drop down into the ground. Uh, like it's not one that you lift up. So you, 
you, you guys, you get on, you end up getting on like this, your shoulders and like everybody, and you get in there and crying <laughs> in from the top and with your guys collective strength, uh, you are able to get it to drop just enough, uh, that it will, um, that you've been able to pry it down and then able to kind of force it so that there's now a gap, uh, like two feet wide that you guys could squeeze through if you want. I don't want to be chopped in half. Uh, can I see through the other side? Can you see through the other side? Uh, up on his shoulders? Yeah. You yeah. you peek through and you see there there's a hallway um, that leads uh, back 30 feet. Is is it good? Is there like a door at the end of this hallway or anything? And then there is a. It opens up into a room, but you can't really make out what else okay. is in the room. I describe what little I do see. Okay. Uh, to my party, and then I think um, I want to. Oh, I have pythons, so I think what we should try doing is like into the side basically right like when we met azaziel and he like tried doing that to like prevent the door from closing again i want to do that but kind of like trying to inch the door down to try to like okay yeah all right uh but i need everybody's help for that because i'm not strong enough to do it by myself all right but if i can give us another foot or two you i mean you want to try to get you another foot or two like are you trying to make it down even more if it's, I mean, I want to take the pythons and like do, you know, kind of yeah, you put them all like together. Lock it in place. Lock in place. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's any way to like pry it down even more, but. And you guys could try to pry it down anymore, or you could use the pythons to lock it in place. Can't the pythons aren't really going to help you move it anymore? Okay. Then I want to I want to use the pythons to, to lock it in place. Okay. Uh, so you get a hammer and kind of like you like wedge them in there. Uh, make a strength check as you beat him kind of into place okay i'm going to i'm going to use my inspiration okay i'm glad that i did 13 okay 13 you're able to like bash it in there uh it kind of chips away at the stone a little bit and gets and fits in there uh the pythons are also slanted so they will kind of go in so you've kind of You've got it in there enough that it is going to provide extra friction and, and slow this door down if it starts to close. Okay. I, uh, I'm like, As okay. you do that, you hear a hissing noise from behind you in the room. You all do. As gas starts to fill the room. Shit. <laughs> I knew those holes were no good. I, uh, I'm on his shoulders. I have my, uh, I take out my little, my little light. Like, well, only way is through. <laughs> I want to hop through that okay. opening that I made. All right. You hop through the opening and you're pretty nimble. I mean, you're, you're a small creature. So you just like, you get through it. No problem. All right. Um, I'm going to like kind of help Blixa, um, hop over I'm, I'm probably the heaviest with the plate mail so i'll mm -hmm. go last all right uh blixa you go you're do you accept that help or are you jumping through the hole yes okay uh you're gonna jump through and please make a what is that an acrobatics yeah you can either yeah strength athletics or dexterity acrobatics 19. Okay. Uh, you're able to squeeze and shimmy your way through. Um, as you do, uh, you feel that it's start, it starts rumbling like it might start moving soon. All right. Um, <laughs> All right. Nolan, you yeet yourself through. Uh, I need you to uh, make a strength check. Or, I guess strength athletics or a dexterity acrobatics, whichever you want. Huh. I I already rolled. So I rolled a sixteen on the des. Uh, strength okay. um, acrobatics would be a plus seven to that. So that's 
23. Uh, strength, do, you, uh, do you have a strength athletics or a dex acrobatics? Oh, strength athletics. Cool. Then that's a it's, 20, it's an escape check. Yeah, it's a it's a twenty six. Oh, okay, yeah, you're good. You you're able to like even with all your heavy army, uh, bust your way through that door, and oh, then yeah. uh, uh, now I need you to make an initiative roll to see if you beat the door while it's closing. So you have the strength. You're you're doing it. What's your initiative? <laughs> a five. <gasps> Really? Yeah. I rolled a seven and I was like, surely he's going to beat this. Um, yeah, you jump through as the as the door like begins closing and it crushes your legs. Um, you take 15 bludgeoning damage and you walk with a limp. Your speed is reduced by five. Oh, no. Um, shit. Can I? So basically, I'm just a normal human now. <laughs> Masumi's like, what if I gave him that inspiration? Uh... Okay. That's it. Oh, I, I guess I it already happened, uh, Masumi. But sorry, I didn't. I guess sorry, I didn't see it sooner. Um, but uh, we love you, and we're happy that you're here. So, okay, so uh, does cure wounds? Would that help the limp? Uh, cure wounds would re- would restore the damage. Uh, you would need something stronger than cure wounds to fix the limp. Okay. Trying to see if I have something. I mean, it it just reduces my speed to thirty, because I have a thirty-five yeah. <laughs> move speed. Um. Hey. Well then. It wouldn't be less of restoration. But on the plus side, this the ga- the poison gas seems to be stuck in the other room. So Yay. You don't okay. have to that anymore. It works. Okay, I with my little red light, um I would like to proceed down the hallway. Okay, you proceed down the hallway. Uh, it's just it's thirty feet and then it opens up into a wider room. Um, this wider room looks uh it has just a, a normal, like a, a bunch of, it's a round room with a number of different corridors that come off of it. Um, and so you can either go east, north, or west. You guys are coming from the south. Okay. Um, does this room light up as well, or is it just my light? It does not light up. Hmm. Okay. You guys are in the dark. Now... I want to search my memory real quick. Not that it'll help me decide what direction to go. I just want to re- see if I remember. Um, we scried what the room looked like. We saw the inside of this clone room. Mm-hmm. This does not look like the clone room. No, the it doesn't. Ro- so the clone room looks like a kind of a vast cavern. Um, okay. And there were pillars uh, in the room. And around each pillar were these pods. Okay. Okay. Um, it's good that we're here, hopefully clearing out more Black Hand members, but we're looking for a cavern with pillars and pots. Hmm. Well, it could be down further. Because I don't think we're Which going back sh- that way. Um, Doubtful. Which way should we go? What's the saying? Um, adventures go on, right. Adventures go left. But oh, here, let's make a poll. <laughs> um, on any any left or straight. which of the ways, um, is there like a, a draft or is there like any air moving in this? Is the music louder down one. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, say that again, Blixa. So what my my thinking is is if the clone room is a large cavern, I would assume that there's like a lot of air movement. So in any which uh, way of the corridors, is there any like can you can we feel air flowing? Ooh, wonderful it's, question. It's left, right, forward, right? Yeah, left, right, forward. Um, you say chat participate in the poll. Okay, you feel that there is more airflow coming from the left, very faintly. 
that air Great smell question. like? Ooh, this that air does smell caverny. It does smell <laughs> a, a, a little dank. A little just, on the dank just, side. Just like a hint of dank, though. Oh, like Greg's that. over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey man, we were just standing on the side of this mountain, man, and this thing just like <laughs> they're just like just grabbed us. <laughs> just a tiny hole that they're sitting above, like <laughs> and you blowing know the me. smoke into yeah. so the smoke doesn't uh, rise up. <laughs> so the forest police don't stop them. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> shatter hole, man. Uh, okay, I think we got more votes going left, so let's go left. Plus the 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 breeze. The airflow in- information, I think. I think we go left. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, real quick, still... Masamune, feel free to. You still have that inspiration. Feel free to give it to somebody uh, whenever you want. And then I think who else? I think it was it was Gabriel. Uh, I think also had an inspiration mm-hmm. to give. Yeah. Um, that is correct. And because it's from chat, if we don't use it this time, we can use it next time. Yep. Um, okay. I'm still like checking for traps along the way in. Okay, You're checking for traps. You guys, yeah, you guys choose to go left. Uh, you do feel that the air is a, it, it is getting kind of damper, right? Um, and you go, you travel for another like 15 feet. You do see like uh, every kind of 10 feet or like, no, like, was it like 30 feet? You see doors. Um, so one on your left and your right. And then another one. And then so you've gone 60 feet now and you see two more doors and then you hit the end of the hallway. Um, so there are four doors on this hallway is what I'm trying to communicate. Um, mm. one, uh, two on, on each side. And then it turns and it, uh, at a 90 degree angle and, it, and then it goes, uh, you see the, the hallway turn right. And the, is there still air movement coming from the right? Mm-hmm. It just feels like this hallway is just like a little bit cooler. Um, mm-hmm. It's a little, it's like 20% cooler than the rest of the hallways, you know, like. It's, it, I'm, I'm not a regular like, hallway. I'm a uh, cool hallway. Uh, I'm, I'm cool. I don't really hang out with those other hallways. Yeah. <laughs> um, Masamune says to whoever's going first and inspecting. So that'd be me. <laughs> it was <just> like dibs. <laughs> so thank you, Masamune, for that inspiration. <laughs> All right. So what are you inspecting? Um, it's the jock hallway. I think when we go, when we're passing by the doors, I want to take a listen and see if I hear people inside. Because if, if there's black hand members here, it's it's midday. So mm-hmm. like the, if you know, there's anybody awake, they should be talking or breathing or whatever. I want to, we should clear them out while they're here. While we're it's here. actually, it's more like early morning, but yeah. I mean, not early. It's, not, it's like late morning. Yeah. It's like okay. 10 or 11. Yeah. Okay. But yes, uh, you listen uh, to, and you don't hear anything from any of the doors except for the last one on your left. Okay. Um, and it le- and it sounds like two people have kind of ducked in here and they're having a private, like a private conversation between, it sounds like two people. signals i don't know what we're saying <laughs> and then randall stags there um, making hand signals back <laughs> and it stabs all of us <laughs> i peer around the corner you pee around the corner and like, I, I, like, I, I, like, like we're not with our friends and i see him behind like making signals and i'm just like whatever no, Chris, and we, like, didn't, we didn't uh, hear like, it, like that it's like Chris, that realization Chris, 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 that like Chris. That was it. <laughs> Chris, we didn't hear peer. I said I pee around the corner. <laughs> oh, 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 we heard yeah. him. Here. Yeah, that rash isn't going away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, uh, yeah, I mean, you you are you guys are being silent, being quiet. Yeah. Uh, do you guys keep going? What do you guys do? Yeah, I'm like, I'm like 
Okay. <laughs> okay. So I guess we're opening the door. All right. Uh, you open the door. Um, like, yeah, you, all right. So you open, yeah, you open the door and as you do, it feels like one person, like you're put, like they had their door or their handle on or their hand on the door handle and we're like, kind of like leaning up against it. Uh, it's like when, you know, you duck into a room real quick and you like keep your hand on it just to like, yeah. like I'm about to open the door to leave again, but like, I'm just here for a minute. Um, and that's what it is. So like, as you open the door, they feel it open and like you, you barge right into these two people. Um, and they're both dressed in like kind of, I mean, in like leather armor. Um, they do look pretty roguey. Um, and neither of them look like Randall Stag. Um, and they, and their armor does have the black hand symbol on it. Okay. I don't recognize them. Do I? You don't recognize them. Okay. And they go, what are you doing here? Uh, sorry, this room is taken. Oh, it's taken? Oh, I guess we better clear it up. <laughs> All right. Uh, Roll initiative. <laughs> are you attacking them? Roll initiative. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 22. Okay. That's a pretty good one for you, Riss. Thank you. <laughs> it's really it's really fortunate because I started this. <laughs> uh, 17. Wolf child, we need to hydrate. Alexa? 10. Oh, gosh. I totally need to hydrate. 10 Thanks, for Nasir. Yeah, hold on. I got I to gotta do that because I'm actually very thirsty. That was good. That was a good hydrate. Very good hydrate. Oh my god. I can't believe that I got that high of an issue. <laughs> like, uh all right. Uh all I don't right. Know. Whose turn is it? It is uh definitely Blix's. Or sorry, Nasir. Riss's. Damn it. Okay, <laughs> like, mom, like, get our names right. Children. I just went through all of you. Uh <laughs> Um, all right, I, I will aim to stab at one of these. Actually, I have my friends coming in behind me. Can I get to the other side of these guys uh, without uh, procking a, a uh, opportunity attack? Um, yes, because you're a small creature. Excuse me. Okay. Great. Um, he's like, so, huh? like, so yeah, you're like, you're I want to get doorway. flanking happening. He just like, yeah, he just opened it up. Um, there's one person immediately on your right. And then the guy like right in front of you holding the door, there's a conference, a long conference table in the room with these, with these different chairs um, and a glass orb in the middle. And from there, oh uh, yeah, the room's probably like 15, like, yeah. What is that? Like a 15 by 15. All right, so I get to the other side of these guys. Yep, Hopefully get on the get, other side of them. Get a flanking situation happening. Okay. Um, does that? What does flanking do? Does that give me an advantage? Well, if or has I, has Nasir not come in the room yet? Yeah, it's like somebody has to be on the like immediately in front of him. So you'd you'll be behind it to set up flanking for somebody else. Okay, uh, that's um, fine. And he's I like, will, what? Yeah, I, <laughs> I rush through them and then ha ha. I stay, I bring out my dad, my uh, rapier, and like, I. Oh shit! Uh, that is gonna be a dirty twenty. A dirty twenty. All right, to, to hit. hit. Yeah, you hit him. Okay. Here we go, baby. Eh. Great. Uh, six damage. <laughs> six damage. Yeah. He, he, he takes it. All right. He takes it. Um, and then, uh, so hold on. Okay. Yeah, no, that's it. That's my turn. All right. Good. Good turn. Uh, Blixa, you're up. Wonderful. Um, 
Was I next to go into the room or am I behind this ear? Uh, you uh, you were behind this year. That was the marching order you guys gave me, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So thinking. Uh, am I able to hit anybody? Yeah. I mean, there's the one guy who's like right in front of the door and he's got wrists behind him. And then, um, and you can shoot, like you can shoot through Nolan, right? Cause he's your friend. Like he knows how to duck out of the way and like, you're like over his shoulder. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, the right. other guy is behind full cover unless you kind of like move to the left because he's standing next to the wall. Okay, cool. I am going to shoot him. Shoot her! Uh, the one standing in the doorway. So do okay. I get advantage with wrist right there? Or no, because I'm not. It has to be a melee one. attack. It doesn't work. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. Cool. Harry. Right. Fine. And that is, hold on, I was losing my calculator. Uh, 18 to hit. 18 to hit, that hits. Wonderful. And then, Uh, it's 21 damage. 21. They, he takes it. And then I'm going to do my second attack. Okay. And what do I have? Um, I'll use favored foe on him. Ooh, okay. Ooh. That's basically Hunter's Mark. And that is uh, that's a twenty four to hit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that that'll definitely hit. Let's see. I need to start giving things like really high ACs now. <laughs> and that is twenty eight damage. Okay. Good job. Uh, you, he had 27 hit points left. So, uh, oh, sorry. He did. But now that you know that, I forgot. I was, he had a thing he was going to do. As you take the second shot at him, he realizes he's kind of gotten his wits about him now. Realizes, shit, these people are attacking me. I should defend myself. Um, and he, you see him, like, you, he, he takes the second hit, but he's able to, like, move his body in such a way that he reduces the damage. Um, he kind of does like a mid, like a, a dodge. He's the uncanny dodge from the rogue uh, with his reaction to have the damage. So, he's, but it's like, it's in his shoulder and he's like, oh, like, fuck. Um, and he's almost died, dead. Accidentally exited out of my, uh, <laughs> My D and D Beyond. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get that back up. All right. So with that, uh, it's actually his turn next. Uh, so then he's gonna draw his uh, his dagger, realizing that he's in cover or like that he's like screwed, and he's gonna deftly like duck and then get behind Larissa. Um, and Larissa, I need you to make an athletics, uh, a strength athletics check. Athletics. Okay. Good night, Arrow Cat. Good night, Arrow Cat. Good night, Arrow Cat. Love you, dude. Um. Okay. Uh. Is okay. That's gonna be a fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. You. He's trying to pick you up. Um. Uh, oh, you have. Oh, this is a grapple. Wait a minute. Set, so he, you have. I have advantage anyway. But it doesn't matter. You already beat him. Um. Okay. I would have so, definitely beat him after that. Yeah. Though. So he, <laughs> try, he he tries to pick you up to use you for cover, um, but you're able to. You're like nah, and just like squirm away. And he's he's like, Ugh. so then he's like stuck there, and that uses his whole action. Uh, now he doesn't know what to do. Uh, so now okay. it's Nasir's turn. Elbowed him oh. in the sternum, and I said, I do not consent. <laughs> <laughs> Going. Un 
Unga Bunga uh, goes through the door, gonna just <laughs> like just do a stab at that guy um, that we've been hitting. Okay. Ooh. Give him a good old stabby stab. That's an eleven. Okay. That don't hit. Uh, no, it does not. Okay. You, uh, wait, Nasir just missed that. I know. Happens. I'm. Are you okay? Are you I am okay. Right? Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm using D and D Beyond. <laughs> my dice are on the other side of the room. All right. Cool. Second oh, attack. Yeah, yeah. That's a sixteen to hit. Uh, that hits actually. Okay, perfect. Um, <laughs> sort of, the other one would have hit if I didn't take the minus five. But you know what? I'm stubborn. <laughs> All right. I mean, you said I'm never taking it, so I'm I holding know. you to that. So cool. That's twenty eight and an additional seven radiant. So that is thirty five damage. Oh my gosh! Yeah, he's dead. He could not. He already used his reaction on the other one. Oh, wait, no, he got it back. Uh, he's going to try to dodge out of the way of this. What was it, 37? 35. 35? Let's see if he survives. Nope, he still goes down. He tries to dodge, but you still get him. Uh, and uh, he accidentally, like, he's trying to turn away and turns into it and cut him across the chest and he dies. Cool. And there's, a, there's another person there, right? And there is. They're cool. Now Yep, right next to you. Back into the uh, back end of it. Get him. Do that. That is a twenty-three. That does hit. Okay. Wait, hold on. I'm going to put um, a Divine Smite into this. Oh, gosh. All right, cool. So cool. Uh, base damage is... I'm going to re-roll that too, though. So I have great weapon fighting. Um, that is 24 slashing, and then it's going to be... Fourteen radiant damage. Twenty-four slashing and fourteen radiant. Correct. All right. Let me. Uh... So he's going to use his reaction as well to have that. So that's nineteen. Um, and then yeah, it's now his turn. Okay. Or is your turn over? That is my turn. Okay, so yeah, he, he uses his reaction to have that damage. Oh, and it catches him across the chest. Uh, and then he ducks under the glaive, uses his bonus action to disengage. I'm still going to make an opportunity attack with Sentinel. With Sentinel? Even when they take the disengage action? Yep. Actually, yeah. Wow. So Sentinel is... Um, when you hit a creature with an opportunity attack, the creature's speed becomes zero. Uh, cr- creatures provoke opportunity attacks uh, from you even if they disengage. Wow. Okay. That was really annoying in uh, the first campaign I was in. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Roll it. Please hit. Fuck. <laughs> no, that misses. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. You would have stopped him in his tracks. Yeah, you would have. He jumps over your sweeping attack, uh, disengages, and then uses his action to dash, and he runs down the hallway past you guys turns left runs down the hallway and Both shouting of us? yeah disengage works on multiple people at once yeah so disengage turns off like you don't take any attacks for the rest of the your turn hmm. um this is so, i'm i'm listening i am listening to battle music now so this is all really intense right now <laughs> <laughs> So I'm listening to like Ravenloft combat music. Oh my gosh, that's way cool. So I'm like, uh, ah! <laughs> yeah. So he, dude, I do that at work when I'm doing boring work, and just like turn on, I'll I'll listen to uh, Two Steps from Hell while I'm working. I feel so epic while I'm looking at spreadsheets. It's great. Yeah. Um, um, anyway. When is the end of his turn? 
uh, hold on. At the end of his turn, uh, he is running on the hall. And you hear him cry out, fuck, the rumors were true. They're in. Uh, and he cries out for help. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, that's the end of his turn. Did you? And that's also the end of the now? Well, the rumors were true. The rumors oh, are true. I guess our reputation precedes us. <laughs> it's, I, it's not your turn. Do you have a thing okay. or a feature no. that lets you do it? No? Okay. I just wanted to shoot him as he was running away. Little okay. coward. With that, we are going to end the session right there. Okay. Oh, no! Are you kidding? Me? Ah. Ah! All right. Yep, he's going to run down. Uh, so oh, we'll see if you guys man. catch him at the beginning of the next one or Let's... and what happens. So oh, I guess in the oh, middle fuck. of... I do have a I I always forget. I just forgot I had that luck point. I could have used that. Oh, you could have. You could have. Uh, are you attuned Ooh. to that? I uh, I am. Okay. Uh real quick. Uh did we uh did Moss and Mune Moss and Mune gave their inspiration from chat to Riss? Uh me. Gabriel, did you end up giving oh Gabriel got off to say goodnight. If you're still there, Gabriel, uh feel free to give your inspiration to somebody. Gabriel might have been saying night to Arrow Cat. So, Gabriel, if you're still here. Okay, yeah, Gabriel, if you're still there, you want to give your inspiration before we, we jump off? Just yeah. to have for next time? It would be appreciated. Um, now, I guess. You want to inspire the rogue? No! What? what? He said him. No. I'm just going to assume he means me. I mean, it's fair, but. <laughs> um my dagger do we find out what that does yes leveling Sorry. up or uh, like you'll discover it um next time use you it? use it all right okay nolan <laughs> all right nolan please take the gabriel's in chat from inspiration uh, inspiration from chat um sweet yeah for the start of next session cool and yeah, don't forget yeah. so i think I who has inspiration right now we'll mark it down so we remember i have it oh i know i mean mine goes away right so i mean keep your regular ones uh just yeah we're just gonna we're pausing here so if you have inspiration you keep that and then if you have the inspiration from chat as well you have that in addition so you'll have two okay. i only have one i only okay. have the chat one okay so opportunity to earn inspiration from you dear dm my friend <laughs> all right we'll see <laughs> you know what you know what i'm gonna make it interesting the dm you can have my inspiration <laughs> you did not just i'm making i'm making it interesting and so gracious lord dm of hosts please take my inspiration for a what wonderful for a wonderful uh session today thank you well, thank you thank you very much um yeah i'm gonna take that and i'm gonna kill somebody with it do Probably it not you um because you're so gracious you've killed me multiple times can it be <laughs> someone else it's gonna be somebody else uh I don't know. i'll well, give you my we'll inspiration i'm the only other option okay. no one <laughs> <laughs> no, but wait I, like i can't use my inspiration to kill somebody I mean, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. We'll see when Please. I use it. But I have well, I just I wanted to make it interesting. So yeah. we're already we're already <laughs> well, in a child is like we want it interesting. <laughs> what? Oh yeah. Yes, we do. Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you very much. Oh my god. Uh so thank all you right. for joining us for <laughs> yeah, what will be our last time. episode because we're all gonna die. <laughs> I mean, an advantage on one roll isn't gonna make. <laughs> Or break the entire campaign. No. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Jello with that Watch. look in your it eye. Depends, yes, depends it on is. The role. No, obviously it's going to be Reggie. Like he's going to be like, "Hey guys," and then it gets crit on from the advantage. And... I've been like, <gasps> "Advantage." Wolfchild re redeemed a pep talk. <gasps> so that pep is the, that's the equivalent of a bardic inspiration, which is but like a, a D four. Give, oh, give it to the who are you giving DM. a pep talk to? Yeah, well, child, who do you want to give it to? <laughs> to you? Oh, he's who said death to Zilla? DM that in to there. use as he wishes. He <gasps> I get advantage, and all right, I gotta make sure. All right, this is I, I'm writing this down. Um, I'm gonna use this at one of those times when I'm just like 
really want the cool moment to happen, but then the dice work against me. I think Nolan and... gave a pep talk to the DM as well. <laughs> <laughs> No one's, no one's just trying to just bribe count me. if it's real. He was like, <laughs> he's like death to Zilla on the fire and dice chat. He's like, just don't kill me this time. It's anybody me. but me. <laughs> I don't get to come back anymore. Chat Why needs to stop talking. Happen to good giving, people? What happened to don't give the DM ideas? Now we're giving him all the ammo he needs. For all um, the ideas, stop it. <laughs> and I'm playing. I'm playing a, a whole like hideout full of rogues right now, so they can turn that advantage into sneak attack whenever they want. Like, can you is... people not? And guess this what? They're all in their so lair, good. so they have lair actions. Yeah, I'm, Shut I'm, up! Actually, it's gonna be so good. Rogue v rogue, like the I, the theme is working. Right, may um, the best rogue win, I guess. Oh, I'm, yeah. Thank you. I hate That's, you all. I, hate it here. <laughs> <laughs> all right we love you guys we're gonna raid and then uh we will see you uh we'll actually not be playing next week uh but we will be back the week after that so okay. um we will be taking a quick break um that we've works got a couple people schedule right so yeah <laughs> just heads up uh we will be back in two weeks thank cool. you beans all right, all right let's bye go. guys i'm kidding i love you all <laughs> bye everybody <laughs>